yep, okay. I'm actually on the I'm on the other one. <laughs> I follow that. I'm on the other one and it's showing the other place. But I'm pretty sure we're gonna get pretty clear now. And actually we even um and actually people can even come in the back. Cause actually let me put that link at the bottom to where you can actually come in the back. So let me put that there for you. Give me one hot second. And And if I have saved that, so now if you refresh, you can actually go, you can see the link down at the bottom and now you can actually come in the back. Let me make sure, yeah, the link is there. So the link is there and you guys can actually come in the back if you like. Yeah, now I can go through here as people doing that, then as people coming to the back, if you wanna ask me any live questions, you can come in the back and, um, or you can continue there, but all you have to do is just click on the link and it pull you automatically in the back. Yeah, and actually I see some people already saying the, the quality is way better. Yeah, because um, Zoom does something else that that that's way better. And I'll probably end up switching over to that as a, as a main thing. So I wanna sit there and see what is happening here if people clear, yeah, okay. I hear you guys, so next week I already know what to do. I know exactly what to do, but I do have people that's coming in the back. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to where, yeah, everybody, yeah, they pounded me with it. So I hear you, I got it. It'll be on, it'll be on Zoom. So I'm good. Yeah, loud and smooth. Yeah, everybody's saying the same thing. Told you it's a whole different ball game over here. So it can, it's, I can do it another way here to, to take care of things. So now I do have, um, in the, yeah, and people in the back, I do have a question. Um, you are not choppy. Yeah, okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, the exam, I'm not choppy back here. Yeah, so I, I knew that was, I knew that, you know, I know back over on this side, it does something different to which I can do it a whole different way. Okay, so 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 let's go ahead and pick this up. So I don't know if we have any questions that's going on here. Much clearer, better, yeah. So next, so next time what I do, I just run it through here, a lot simpler, no more issues. And, and let's see. Let's see, a uh, good volume, much better. Same thing. Uh, and it says, uh, Acts 26, then the King Griffith said to Paul, I was persuaded me to be stupid a Christian. Oh, okay, that's uh, Nakia. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and that's all, that's literally what most people don't know. That's all he was actually saying the entire time. So, so I just want to see. And um, I'm not seeing nobody, no too many questions. I've seen questions on the other ones, but I guess the people who had the questions, they're not in here yet. <clears throat> but if they refresh, they'll see that the, the links are there. And I'm trying to go through, and we do have one. And Brother Micah. Hey, uh, good morning, Elder, how are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good, how you doing, my brother? I was doing all right, and I was just uh, calling to see whether you was going to be able to pick the earlier parts of that lesson up, because you know, I was still working on it. I was on the X, uh, where you was talking about King Agrippa and, you know, being accused to the Jews, and that's when yeah. it cut off on me, so I didn't get to see okay. the rest. Good part, the yeah, yeah, the good part about that is, even if it cuts off, because for some reason, what um, YouTube is doing, I really don't get what one part that they're doing, but there's some parts to where they don't want to push out for whatever reasons. So what we do, we have it also over, on, it'll be over at KJBU. So you can also go there and you'll be able to view it in its entirety. And you can also go to our VMO channel, which um, I can actually put it up. Let me put that on there. And you can actually go there and you can actually view many of our videos there. 
which is being recorded there also. And uh, that's one of the reasons um, we do that for that for that simple for that simple reason. Yeah, and actually, let me put that link there. And um, and brother brother Lynn, brother Lynn, shalom elder, shalom 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 my brother, shalom elder. Hey shalom, how you doing, my sister? Oh fine. Oh. You went uh, silent on us right after uh, Acts 11 and 26. I didn't get the verses between that and 1 Peter. In 1 Peter? Oh, no, I, I've got 1 Peter, but the ones before that. Oh, okay. One second. I can pull it. I was doing, I was doing one quick thing and uh, making sure everybody can actually get this. Yeah, 1 Peter, but the ones before that. The ones before. Okay. So. <laughs> so Okay, I have Acts 11 and 26. Okay, one second. One, hold on one second. Let me just, let me get this one part down pike real quick. And I want to get this one thing. Uh, hold on one second. I get this. Yep, there we go. I just want to get this to put it in there for the YouTubers. Okay, so all people have to do is go right to that link right there and you can see all the home page. Yes, Woody. I can't. Yo, no, come, come here, I'm gonna show you. Hold on one second. Y'all got it. Y'all got Miss Priority then came in. <laughs> no, one second. Let me uh let me do her let me do her thing real quick. And take care of that. And we're gonna take care of stop this one. It's gonna make Okay, one second, you guys. Uh, let me do this one, and let me go to the home. And you go here. You right there. I just put that one on there. Oh no, I didn't want this one. And and this. Okay, see right. See right here, you click on this one here and open. And you, oh, you gotta go out. Yeah, yeah, then you can do the other thing. Okay, sorry about that, you guys. Miss Pri Miss Priority was in here, so I had to take care of that real quick. <laughs> okay, so, so, so now, um, let me get those verses for you. So you said you had the verses from from where? I have uh, Acts 11 and 26. Then the mic, we couldn't hear anything. Then it picked back up on uh, 1 Peter's 2 and 21. Okay, 2 and 21. It picked back up on there, but in between Acts and 1 Peter. Okay, you need 1 Peter 4, 14 through 16. Okay, no, I have that. Okay. I'm talking about up at Acts uh, 11 and 26. I have that. Oh, dang. Way up there? Mm -hmm. Then your mic went dead. Then it picked back up at 1 Peter 2 and 21. Dang. Okay. So you. It wasn't much. So you need Acts 26, verse 2 through 3. Let me see. No. Okay. You need Acts. 26, 26. I have Acts 11 and 26. No, you need Acts 26, 2 and 3. Okay, Acts 26, I have that. Yeah, back up to 1 Peter's 2 and 1. Yeah, I was just there. I'm going down from there. You okay, know. now go up. Go up. Mm -hmm. What was before that? Uh, Revelations 2 and 5. Okay. Delicious. 11, actually 11, 1121. Okay. Okay. And what I can do, I can, um, I can, um, I can post all my, um, I can post my notes over in uh, KJBU. I can do it that way where you can have it. Okay. Thank you. You're more than welcome. More than welcome. And I think I seen, I believe this is Elder Floyd. 
Elder Smith? Shalom, Elder. Shalom, uh, Shalom, Shalom. Hey, Gummit, it keeps coming up with different names for me. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but you answered the question when you said you was going to post your notes, because I was going to ask you when you, you're going to post the video in KJBU. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to post a video over there. But I didn't know I was doing that. So what I know to do, just to put it, I just do it this way, because way simpler. It's, it's really more simpler for me to do it that way and I can be more direct because I didn't know they were doing the choppy. I really didn't. And I may call you later today to see why it keeps changing names on the elder. Okay, no problem. Okay, shalom elder. Shalom, shalom. And, and, um, and we also have, um, can you, can I use precept Ezekiel 3, 1 and 3, Okay, so we gotta we gotta look at something here. We gotta go to um, Ezekiel. We have a question where we're going to Ezekiel three one. We're gonna look at that real quick, and we want to see. We're gonna we're gonna pull this out. Ezekiel three one. Let me get down to this here, because I gotta do everything differently. So I'm gonna do it this way real quick. So you want three one. In 3.3, 3. it says, moreover, he said unto me, son of man, eat that thou findest this roll, eat the roll, and go and speak to the house of Israel. Yeah, that, that's exactly the point. So, so, and what he's talking about in the whole thing is when he's addressing the son of man. So the son of man, dang it, I need to pull, I need to pull this up. Let me, let me, let me try to do it this way, because I really do need to pull that one up for you to see what I'm talking about. Um, let me see, how can I do this? Oh, I can do it this way. Let's do it this way. Because I want you to see this. Come on. Okay, now why did it do that? Okay, that's okay. I got a better way of doing it. I'm gonna get rid of this one. And I'm gonna pull this other one up. Got it. Okay, so I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go down to it. Now let me go to Ezekiel, and then I can switch over to it. So let me get some of this set. Here in Ezekiel three one. Now we're gonna look at this. Now let me now let me switch this here, real quick for you guys. And now we're going to go to Ezekiel 3.1. So it says, moreover, it says, moreover, son of man, eat, thou, eat, eat that thou findest, eat this roll and go speak to the house of Israel. So what we have to understand is what it's actually saying. Because he's telling you when he's addressing son of man, he's talking about mankind. So he's talking about, he's talking about us. We're supposed to do this and, and we have to eat the, this roll and go speak to the house of Israel. So as what we say, what we have to do, we have to go out there and speak the truth. But what they doing is people not eating the roll, they sitting there eating pieces and then they're going to speak. And then they like to, oh, the, the, oh, the Lord just told me, don't do that. And a lot of people like to say, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's a bunch of silliness. But what they try to do is elevate themselves above you. That's why they do that. And most people are not recognizing that that's what they're doing. But when they do that, they're, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. And they act like the Holy Spirit just told them something that they told you, that they, for them to tell you. And that's a bunch of silliness. Don't, don't get caught up into those trips like that. But that's what they do. The reason they do that, because they want to sit there and put themselves so far above you to where now you sit there and you always think that the Most High is talking with them and the Most High don't even do that. He, don't, he won't even... He won't even tell you in that manner to which he's going to be doing that on you on a constant basis. To where the people sit there, oh, he's telling me this and he's telling me that and he's telling me, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Silliness, bunch of silliness. So it's like he, when, he, when you're out there and you're speaking to the people, now he forgot to show you something that he's going to, that he's going to lead you to, oh, tell him this too. Bunch of silliness. And we have, uh, uh, 
Revelations, we have Revelations 10, uh, 10, 8. Let's go over there and let's look at Revelations 10, 8 and see what Revelations 10, 8 is saying. Let's see what Revelations 10, 8 is saying. Let's get there and And it says, the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, go take the little book. Yeah, this is one of the ones I actually use. <clears throat> the other hand, and the angel standing upon the sea. This sea is not talking about a sea based in the sea what they think. This is the people. This is upon the people upon the earth. That's all it's actually saying. But the, but the problem is people <clears throat> like to sit there and go through concordances and all this stuff in the Bible have affiliations and we have to understand how these words function. Once we understand how the words function, the Bible is clear and it's clear all through scripture. And that's why it's so easy then to figure out what's going on and to understand the Bible. So that's why you have some people that sit there and say, you know, we put out a, um, a precept study Bible and people will sit there and some people that sit, it open their minds up to everything to where they can see everything so much clearer. But then you have some people, oh, why you got this out? Why you got that out? Why you got this out? But the thing is, then go buy what you want to buy. It's, it's, it's that simple. But the main thing is, it's better to know what the Bible is saying and know what the words mean more so than somebody giving you commentary and telling you what something means. And that's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get this. Divorce now, I'm married. I don't get that. And um, and yeah, we can do that Zoom access code. Yeah, normally when I do it, I normally do a Zoom access code. I normally put that at the bottom, so that's no problem. So we have that there. And I do want the uh, other questions that we do have. And it says, and um, Thomas, I was. I was explaining what Christian mean to people. I said it means crazy and stupid. Word Cretan, they said, if I look on <laughs> on Google, say follow Jesus, and I'm and um and I be I looked at mental institution. Yeah, exactly the point. <clears throat> Same thing yesterday. A guy told me that um, corn is indigenous to America. I don't even have to really say because, and then he says in the Bible six to seven times, which is in there 107 times. However, how is it indigenous? So did Abraham and all them have it shipped over to them? It goes back, that's how silly it goes, but he said he found it on Google. So now people, Google is the Bible and the Bible is match, being matched against Google. Technically what is happening, but, but the Bible, and that's why it's really dangerous when people want to play with other books. So the same thing, you go play with those CIFA Bibles, you go play with those, those NIVs, those New King James Bibles, you go play with all these other Bibles, which over time, every, every year or every couple of years, what they start doing, they start changing some of the words on what they mean. So when they start changing the words, they change it based on time. So as it, as it changes, now it comes up with a new meaning. Now the, now, the crazy thing is the King James Bible just don't change. It just leaves it just flat out what it is. So people say it's hard to understand it and the words is very hard to understand. Some people, is I can say that's a yes and kind of no question. Once you understand the precepts, it clearly gives you understanding exactly what the Bible is saying. I can give you a ton of examples where he talking about in the midst, actually I could, let me do an example because I don't like to leave people blank. So let me let me go here. I'll go here. And let me look one second. Let me pull. I just want to pull something up real quick because that's the easiest way to do it is to give you an example to show you what I'm talking about. And other than that, it'll be a waste of time. So I just want to pull something up. Let me let it finish out one second. And okay, let me see. 
Let me pull this up. And then we're gonna take that question again. So let me pull this up. Okay, now we're gonna go back to Genesis. So let's look at Genesis real good. So Genesis chapter one, and we're gonna go down. So let's go down. And we're gonna go down to, I think it's verse, here we go. We'll start, we'll go right here. Okay, now we know in 21, actually we'll start here. It says, and God said, what? Let the waters bring forth abundantly, the moving creatures that have life and fowls that may fly above the earth and, and in the open firmament of the heavens. And God created great whales in every living creature that moves, which, which uh, the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind and God saw that it was good. All that's clear. So keep that in mind. Then it says, and God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas. What is this saying? Fill the water in the seas. And right there, that, 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 that'll that throw off many people. Why? Because they're not understanding really what the affiliations of these words mean. So if you don't understand the affiliation, now why it says fill the water in the seas, and then it says, and let the fowls uh, multiply in the earth. So why is he talking about fowls multiply? So he's saying, why is he saying birds multiply in the earth? Why is he putting so much emphasis on that? If that's what he meant, then that should, should, should be what he's talking about. But that's not what he's saying. Because the seas is talking about the people. And these are many people that, that is upon the earth. And feel the knowledge in the seas. So, you, so we have to feel the people with this knowledge. That's all he's technically saying in, in, in this all together. And then even brings on more on same thing. All this here, he's emphasizing on people. And then he said there the same thing. And he said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, let him have dominion over the, over, over the fish of the sea. He said he's gonna make you a fisher of men, didn't he? But did he not? Why are people, see, you have people who will sit there and talk about uh, 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 their spiritual this and they spiritual that and they're not spiritual anything. They carnal this and they carnal that. This is what they really are because they're not understanding the spiritualness that's actually in the scripture. The Bible is a spiritual book. He said, you got to worship me in spirit and truth. So if you don't worship him in spirit and truth, why he's going to give you carnal stuff? Can you answer that? They, these are the questions that somebody has to be able to answer. And if, if, he, if he's not carnal and he tells you clearly that he, you worship him in spirit and in truth, so he's going to give you a spiritual book and you sit there and you're going to worship him carnally. Who, who, who's the crazy one? It makes you the crazy one. But then you don't see it in the spirit. So since you don't see it in the spirit, you're going to look at it carnally. So then when somebody telling you in the spiritual side, now you think they're crazy. And he never said that. This right here, fish of the sea. But he tell you he's going to make you fishers of men. He's telling you this right up front. Right in Genesis 126. This is the craziness that, 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 that has everything. I, I can tell you, it really gets really crazy when we try to understand how people understand scripture and what they want to tell you about scripture and, and how much they know about scripture and all everything else. So, 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 this, is, so this is why um, we, have, we have those problems. And, and this is why, you know, some people that sit there and they talk about, you know, KJBU, you know, us and all the other elders, you know, we sit there and we, we on all these other kicks. Everything we do, we go right through the precepts. And as one brother got in there, precepts is king. And the main thing is, is like um, what I mainly do, I do mainly, I do a lot of spiritual side teachings. And most people get a thorn. Why do a thorn? They said, had, had a guy got a show called Spiritual Combat. Sit there and said that he watched some of our videos and it was confusing. Why? How are they confusing? And I can show you what things mean. Show them right to you. This is the problem because they're carnal and they see things carnally. They see a woman as a woman. And it's not even speaking of a woman. 
I don't know what to say. Uh, he thought Paul was brought before King Agrippa because the Jews had accused him of teaching the laws done away with and responded, never taught such things. Well, now you see why you see why they caught him. You see what they did? Because he literally was sitting there saying that this man has rose from the dead. I'm showing it to you right in scripture. Festus them knew Paul's background. Paul knew the laws of the Father, he knew the laws of God. But Festus is looking at that, he thinking that now he learned this other one, this other, this another doctrine. So now Festus really think he have three doctrines. So Festus is sitting there saying, this dude is crazy. He didn't, he didn't have too much learning. He didn't, he didn't blew a fuse. That's what Festus thinks. So this is understanding correct in addition to home going, addition to home being called a Christian. Correct in addition to home being called, okay, I'm not understanding. So this is understanding correct in addition to home being called Christian. So I'm not understanding quite what you're saying. Christian is just flat out what it is. Christian just means stupid. Stupid, crazy, you call it whatever you want to call it. But you see clearly Paul, when they call Paul mad, you see Paul denied it because he was being called a Christian. Paul denied that. But people will sit there and happily take on Christian. People will happily say, I'm a Christian and I'm proud of it. Now, the Bible tells you, if you're a Cretan, which is the same thing as a Christian, if you're a Cretan, you're a liar. The Bible tells you this right up, right up front. Right up front is telling you this. So if someone say we're Christians, they're sitting there, they're telling you we're mad, we're crazy, and we're liars. <laughs> you can say it however you want to say it, that's what it's saying. No other way around it. So this is what happens. Um, let me see, I have uh, trying to go through some of the questions in the back. And divorced 15 years ago, and uh, 15 years ago, I'm in the truth, I'm still married. Well, he always, he, you go in, but you sin no more. So now if you marry again, and you wasn't in the truth, but now you're in the truth. So now when you go and you get married this time, you, you're done away with. So now you make sure you don't go do this again. So now you stay with this wife. That's what you do. Because you didn't know, it don't mean that you're not guilty for what you did. You're still guilty for that, but he'll forgive you that one. Now you go and you sin no more. Now don't do that anymore. That's what that says. And to feel people, Okay, wife married someone else and divorce. And I'm still in the truth, still married to her. So it's the same thing. Okay, it's the same thing where you go to the woman who, who's got caught in adultery. You go to the same situation, you go to the same situation. Was she guilty of what she did? Yes. But he told her to do what? He extended her grace. Go. Grace. But what did he say with that? Sin no more. Don't do that no more. Why? Because now she have knowledge of the truth. So don't do it anymore. Same thing. You go, you marry again, now you're in the truth. Yeah, you ain't no divorcing. Yeah, let us teach. I'm trying to sit there and see. Yeah, okay. You did tell me this truth. I have learned more. Okay. And Smith says, I am new to your channel and new to this truth. I have learned more in one week of watching your videos and all my teachings over the years. Thank you for your diligent work. And we'll be purchasing the study tools and continue getting clarity in this truth. You're back here. I don't know why you don't want to talk, but. You know, I can bring you up if you want to, but yeah. And uh, we have Sister Watson, but uh, see, I'm gonna check her. Okay, <laughs> Sister Watson. okay, Sister Watson, how you doing, my sister? I'm doing fine. The last time I talked to you, uh, I had just had surgery and I had a tube in my throat, mm -hmm. but I was still on the anesthesiologist, so I was like talking to you. But the thing I wanted to ask you, it was a uh, reference to. The one that just said, when you said that when um, 
your how was shy said go and sin no more mm -hmm. but so now that i'm in the truth i can get married again but i just can't sin anymore right well if you get married again that's it don't <laughs> if, it, if it's screwing up or whatever you you gotta roll with it but i'm saying because i was married but i'm legally divorced yeah you legally divorced according to man to man right so mm -hmm. Last time we talked, you said I'm still married because he's committing yeah. adultery. Yeah, see, but, but right now, if you marry, if you go marry right now, you divorce while you wasn't mm -hmm. in the church. You didn't know anybody. Right. Okay. He'll forgive you of that. That's what I'm saying. That he's going to forgive. Now you have a knowledge of the truth. Now go. Now when you get married again, don't think you're going to sin anymore as far as getting divorce, this divorce. Okay. That's what he's saying. Okay. I was just wondering if I'm just going to be alone for the rest of my life. No, no. That's what he's saying. You go, you get caught up like that again, that's on you. Okay. I have one more question. Yes. We have to have the face-to-face -face thing going on so I can get the class because I don't want to get too far behind. Oh, which one? On the, on the communication application? Right. Yeah, yeah, that one we're gonna take care of because that one we're actually gonna start in uh, this week. We're gonna be going back into it. And um, and that one, yeah, you'll see it in the back in the class. So you'll be able to see it and everything else. And we're doing it because we, because in back there, what's happening and in, in where, I, where I want people really to understand with that is that, that, that word communication application. It helps you break down the scripture, it gives it to you in little chunks. So one verse might have to be broken up into five chunks. It might go into six or seven or eight chunks. You don't know how many you're gonna go into, but I show you how you break that into little chunks and then you'll know if it's addressing something, if it's a commandment, if it's a topic, if it's a, characterization, a, char a characterization of something, you, you'll find out what everything is. So you'll know what he's talking about because that's the only way you'll know. You have to break exactly. it up. Most, most people are trying to take the entire verse as a whole and get screwed up. Actually, I'm going to tell you what, besides doing that, let's do this. Okay. See, because it, cause it, it screwed it. Okay, let's do this. Because I have a couple of people and I'm going to take that Sister Smith because she's new. So I'm going to take her. And, but first, let me do this and then I'm going to go to Sister Smith. So let me do this first real quick. And then, um, and then we're going to we take care of that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to um, Titus 1.7. Actually, we're gonna go to Titus chapter one. Let's do this. We're gonna see something. Okay, so now what we wanna do is understand something. Actually, do I want to? Do I want to? One second. Let me see, I'm trying to. Trying to switch this over because I marked mine up this way. It's a little bit different. I mark it up a little bit different. And I need to mark it up a little bit more. So are we doing that like basically when we was back in school in English, like we had to find out if this is a question, is this making a statement, a comment, and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, because you see how that's how I got to mark everything up. I mark everything up that way. So if I don't mark it up, then you, it'll be hard for you to where it'll get into. Um, it say like I'm trying to see the best way to put it. I'm trying. It's to like for me if I'm doing uh, one scripture like like in the book in our pre in our study book. Mm -hmm. I'm going like, okay, like first Corinthians. Then when I'm studying that, I'm reading the, the sentence, but I'm breaking it down. But see, sometimes yeah. when I'm breaking That's it down, I get so many precepts, then I get lost into the precepts. Yeah. yeah, but what I want you to see, one second, I'm trying to get it to where you can see this one. Because I'm trying to see that I marked that one up yet. That's what I'm trying to see. Because I want to show you how I actually do it. Trying to sit there and see. One second. 
Man, I didn't, I didn't mark that one up yet. What and then you skip lesson four. So you're going back to lesson four in our study yeah. book. Yeah, I'm going back to lesson four. Yeah, because that one I didn't mark up. See, and what I do, what I just showed you, see, I mark it up, but I thought I marked up Titus. I don't know why I didn't mark up Titus. I did I mark up Titus. No, I didn't mark up that part yet. So let me not show that until I mark it up. Okay. What I normally do, I mark it all up. And then once I mark it up, then you can see exactly how I go through it. Cause that, okay, because I've really been studying, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay a little bit ahead, but you skipped one on me and I was prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was ready. Okay. So um, anyway, just um, let me know so I can get my key. So I, you got all my information so I can get into this class because I'm really diligently seeking the truth. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cause I, what I gotta do, I gotta, shoot, I didn't mark it. I, I know you busy. Yeah. I don't know how I didn't mark that up. Cause normally I mark, I mark up everything. Cause what I was just showing you what I do, I put my um, basics there to where I can show you how I break everything down. And, right. and then if you look in that book, you'll see where I broke everything up into characterizations and I do all that. You see how I do it's in the beginning of the book, but then as we get farther in the book until we get to the back. Yeah, I start moving it away. But I but I show you how to do that. But then in the in the written communication part, I do that all through there, which I was just showing. But I but I but I like to make sure it's all prepared when it goes in there. Okay. So that's so we need to hurry up to get me into that class. Okay. Yeah, no problem. No problem. No, no problem. We'll take okay. That. All right then. Okay. And, and um, Sister Smith, I say welcome to you, my sister. How you doing? Hello. She can talk, but I don't hear her. Sister Smith. Don't hear her. Can't get her. I'm gonna leave her. I'm gonna leave her on mic so she can get the mic going. I'm gonna have it the way she can talk. Okay, brother Jesse. Yes, hello, Melder. How you doing? Hello, how you doing, my brother? How you doing? Good. Hey, uh, just um, to to play off, um, well, not Sister Smith, but what was the other uh, sister that was just speaking? Oh, Sister Watson. Yeah, Sister Watson, regarding the marriage. So, so there is a lot of uh, confusion regarding the marriage thing as far as what it is to be married before God and then also like uh, land of the law. So some would say that you could marry, obviously not getting the, what, what do you call it? Um, certificate of marriage, like the license and the uh, what have you. So it, that is still in fact, um, part of the requirement to be fully committed in that marriage before God, correct? Is obeying the law of the land? Yeah, obeying the law of the land, but then you have to come to the knowledge of God. So once you come into the knowledge of God and what he required is basically what's happening. So you have a lot of people who don't have the knowledge of God, but then they sit there and they get married under the knowledge of the land, not under the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. So then what happened is they get married and go on and then you know, she don't do what he want, he don't do what she want, then they get divorced. Yeah. Now, let, now let's say she come to the knowledge of the truth, but she's divorced from the knowledge under the land, even though when she consummated that marriage, she consummated it still under God. Right. Now, when she came together, even in that church, she didn't come together under the church under God, she came into it under the laws of the land, under the God that they see, you follow me? Yeah, the other Jesus. Yeah, so now when you come to the knowledge of God and now he sit there and say, you marry one time, it's a wrap. It's the same as he's saying. So yeah. now he said, now I'm not going to let this go that you married the first time. You still guilty of that. Yeah. And you're going to pay for that. But, but now, since you're in this knowledge, I'm going to forgive you this, 
you're going to get hooked up with however he's going to do it, which I don't know, however he's going to do it. He said, but now you want to go, now you have the knowledge of the truth and you're going to get married. Okay, you're going to get married under, under this one. Okay, now let's say he blew, a, he blew a lid or she blew a lid. You call yourself divorcing her, he's going to hold you 100% responsible. Ain't none of that's forgiven. And if you come into the knowledge of the truth and haven't been married according to the law of the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you if you haven't been married according to the law of the land and you and you and you want to get married, yeah, it's a one time deal until that person dies, or if you die, then she can remarry. If he dies, then she can remarry. And of course, anything as far as getting paying for the the, the previous sins you'd want to pray for, for judgment uh, while you're still breathing in his mercy. Yep, 100%. You don't want to pray for that, or you don't want that judgment after you're already up. Uh, exactly the point. You want your judgment hitting you then. Take my judgment today then. Yep, take your whooping like a man. <laughs> Best way to say it. <laughs> take it like a man. He gonna whoop you in some way, we don't know what it is. He gonna whoop you. We don't know what it is, but take it. And seeing the same thing I say, uh, my grandfather, my mamas, my fathers, everybody, I can take their whoopings all day long. Mm. The hardest one to take was my grandfather's. Why? He gonna preach to you for about 15, 20 minutes. Oh man. Why he gonna whoop you? He love you, but he gonna whoop you. I love you. And then what's worse, he start crying. When he start crying, you might well start crying because he get ready. It's coming. It's coming to the. It's coming to the climax. <laughs> he gonna he gonna cry on you, and then he gonna drop the hammer. Hey, that was that was Papa. That's it. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, my brother. So yeah, he don't he don't he don't nowhere clear the guilty. He's still gonna hold it. But but your know, key thing is, yeah, you want judgment now. You want to be judged now. Shalom, brother. Thank you for that. No problem. No problem, my brother. And Sister Smith, did you were you able to get your speaker going? Nope. Still no speaker. Still not getting the speaker. Okay. I'm still leaving her on mic. And um, we got Brother Max. So I'm leaving her on mic. So if she ever get it on mic, she can because I'm seeing it on mic. But I'm not seeing it, but I'm not hearing it. Shalom, Elder. Hey, shalom, shalom, Brother Matt. Um, just two quick questions. Paul didn't speak seven different languages, did he not? Paul didn't speak seven? Yeah. No. Because that was the Christian doctrine where I came from after stop. They was teaching that. No, Paul didn't speak seven different languages. Okay. Going back to that question about the marriage. Just can you touch on it again? When we, when we didn't have the knowledge of God, we got married foolishly under the laws of the land. Mm -hmm. that was, is that our mistake or we just didn't, well, we didn't know because we wasn't in the knowledge of the truth, the, the true gospel. Okay, so 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 we're gonna look at this again. When you got married, did God tell you to get married? <laughs> no, that was me. God was, God was telling me in dreams that don't you marry that girl. And I was <laughs> suffering in those dreams. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so, so the same thing is, he didn't tell you to get married, but but the Bible tells you. See, what people screw up is this. They say, the man that find it for wife find it a good thing. Okay. They take that and they screw that all up. That's not even what it's talking about. It's not talking about a physical wife. It's talking about the spirit. That's who, that's who you marry, that spirit. So it says a man who finds the spirit of God find it a good thing. That's what it's talking about. The spirit that you want to find is Christ. Now you follow me? Yes. That's what it's saying a good thing. So that one ain't gonna steer you wrong. I don't care what happened. You see, it's the same thing for a woman. A woman who finds this Christ finds her a good thing, because a man gonna screw up too. So, so we don't, so we don't, so we don't sit there with just saying, you know, a man that finds a wife, but a man shows M A N. It's talking about man or woman. So he that finds a wife finds a good thing, and it'll do, it'll do good, doing good all the days of his life. That's all it's saying. But then most women will say, well, a man that finds his wife finds a good thing. No, some men can find a wife and go through hell for the next 50, 60, 70 years. 
So you have to look at that. So it's talking about that. So now when you sit there and you have taken on a woman, now you got to remember, it's the same as the physical, which you're going to look at in the spiritual. Because in the physical, that spirit stays with you until you die. That's what it's, that's what it's showing you in the spiritual to what you see it in the physical. The only time you are to remarry and then you take on another one is once that spirit dies. But guess what? The spirit of Christ do not die. That's Never right die. Right over in Romans. So right. it's telling you everything. It's telling you everything physical, but you have to see it in the spiritual. Now, did I throw you? Or did, are we good? I, I do hear you, Elder. But I always got to look at this, like you said, what God say in a literal way, we have to look at it in the physical. We have yeah. to see it, see what he really means, not what he's just saying. Yeah, not, yeah, don't look at what he's saying because he's saying what he means. That's what throws everybody. That throws everybody. But I'm gonna let me let, let's go here. I'm gonna show you something real quick. And I'm gonna pull up, uh, I'm gonna pull Tracy West up next. But I'm gonna show you something. Man, let's uh one second, I want to make sure it switches over. And yeah, I don't want it with all my all my add-ins. Shalom. Yeah, shalom. Shalom. And okay, I want to. Yeah. Okay. So now we're gonna look at Romans seven one. All right. Now he said, and he says, "Know you not, brother, for you know that I, I I speak to them that know the law." Okay. So we clearly know he's talking about the ones who know the law. So if you know yes. the, law, you know the laws of God. He says, how that the law have dominion over man as long as he live. That never changes. That has never changed at no point at any time. So the law has dominion over you as long as you live. Now, for the woman that has a husband, now he's going to tell you something physically to where you can see what he's talking about spiritually. Okay? Yes. Okay, so he says, how a woman which is bound which have, has a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he lives. So he's telling you, so this woman that's married to this physical man, she's bound by his law as long as he lives. And showing you the physical part. Now he said, but if the husband be dead, she is loose from that law of her husband. So only time that she can be from under him, from all his laws, she has to be, he has to be dead. You follow me? Yes. This is all flesh. Now watch this. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she'd be called an adulteress. So if she's, so if you're in the truth and you know what the truth is, and she know what the truth is, and you go and you marry somebody else, you're gonna be called an adulteress. I don't care what, cause why? He's gonna hold you to this right up here. I speak to them who knows the law. Yes. So if you know the law, and you get a divorce, and you go marry somebody else, you're gonna be called an adulteress. Why? Because you know the law. You follow me? Yes. Yes. This is all. This is all physical. But watch. He gonna. But watch. Paul. Paul is masterful and do. He gonna switch this on you. Now he goes on more. He says. So then, if the husband, you know, her husband lives, she be married to another. He be called those. But if her husband be dead, she's free from the law. You see, you repeat this twice. Yes. So that she is no, 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 no adulteress, though she be married to another man. You see that? Yes. Now he that he gonna flip this. Wherefore, he just flipped it. Why are you saying wherefore? For that reason. That's all he's saying. My brother, he's letting you know ye also become dead to the law by the body of Christ. Why? You worshiping God in the spirit, or you worshiping in, in the flesh. Spirit. Okay, you just got God. That's what Paul's saying. How? I'm going to show it to you. By the body of Christ, what did you have to kill to worship God? The flesh. You got got. Again, you caught, you caught under the law. Why? That ye be married, that ye should be married to another, even him who's raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit, which is the laws of God, unto God. So you, so if you under the laws of God and you worship him in the spirit, you already mortified the flesh. So you in the spirit. So guess what? You caught. 
So how are you gonna step to God and tell God, and God sitting there saying you where well, you where well, you was committing adultery and you say you wasn't? He gonna tell you a lie right here. You caught it. You caught blade flat out in a lie. You can't get around it. And I can I can I can show you a few more in here that way. He no. Can, no, I'll, I'll go ahead and get Sister Smith. I need to dwell on that. <laughs> okay, yeah, you dwell, but yeah, but that's how we get caught up because yes, no matter what we do, we constantly tell people, no, we're not, uh, we're we not under, we're not under this, we're not under that, we're not under this. No, he's telling you, if you worshiping God in spirit and truth, now same thing is same thing. Now we know that we want to. Your wife is y'all become one flesh, right? Yes. Okay, so if you one flesh and you worship God in spirit and truth and you accept the spirit. So y'all become what? One body. One body. So Christ is in you. Where did Christ come from? Spirit. In spirit, and that spirit is God's. So if it's his spirit and he put it in you, you belong to him. <coughs> so we out there whoring around with who? With Methodists, with Protestants, with Baptists, we out there whoring around with everybody. Yeah, I'm about to say false doctrine, but you just said it. That's churches, all these other churches. You horn around like I'm talking like bona fide, unadulterated whores. Drowning in the sea. Doing 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 everything ungodly. I'm worshiping God. I'm worshiping God. No, you ain't. You worshiping Baal. But let me go and take my sister. I know you said you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh Shalom, can you hear me, Elder? Oh, I can hear you. This is Sister Smith. Yes, I finally found my headphones that work. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Hey, welcome, my sister. We welcome you here. Um, I uh, had a question. I uh, went on the website and I was trying to enroll in the class. Um, I was trying to find out how to do that. Okay, yeah. What you do? You go to kjbu.org and um. You got a registration page right there, but, but, but go to the registration and you can self-register. Once you self-register, you self-register, get a, get an all, everything set and you get all your stuff. Then what you want to do is register for the classes. Then you register for the classes and then what they're going to do, they're going to send you, they're going to ask for access uh, enrollment code. Those enrollment codes normally come from us and then most of them come from me. Then what we do, we give you the enrollment codes, you're in the class. That's it. It's that simple. Okay. Yeah, we have tools to which you can use uh, that you can purchase basically to help you out. You can choose to buy them or not buy them. But no matter what, you'll be in the class. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. And so let me bring up uh, Sister Wes. Sister Wes. Oh, Sister Wes. Now I can hear you. Okay. Shalom, Elder. I just wanted some clarity. You're saying that um, we're, un uh, we're under the law uh, until our physical mates die. But if you are not in, just to clarify, if you were not in the truth and you got divorced, mm -hmm. then that's behind you. But if you were to get married again and now you know the truth, that's on you and you can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. You must not divorce. Okay. Let's but everything in the past, but you will be whooped for it. You will be whooped for what happened in the past. Oh yeah. But you're you ain't getting around it. it. Yeah. You're not getting around it. I tell you what, let's look at it better. Let's look at something better. Cause this, this is something that this is always keep this in your pocket, write it down, do whatever you need to do, but put this in your pocket. One second. Let me let this switch over one second. I got this. I got to do this to where I make sure it switches for some reason. Um, Cause I know you guys probably see us talking on YouTube, but give me one second and it should switch. And I think it's like, there we go. Now I know it's there. So we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 10, write this down. Chapter 10. And I want you to go down. We're going to go down to verse 26. Put this in your, put this in your pocket. It says what? For if we sin willfully after we receive knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Exactly the point. 
our praises. Can't get around it. No, sir. So this is what people sit there and they say, oh no, well, we can keep sinning. We can keep doing this. We can keep doing this. Paul, Yahawashai tells you in parables in, in ways. Paul tells you more bluntly because he tells you this and read verse 12 and, 12 and 1. You see that? Romans 12 and 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as uh, present your bodies a living sacrifice, separate, <laughs> acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yes, sir. I see that. Can't get around it. I got it. So I'm clear. <laughs> yeah. So 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 these are the problems. But my thing is, my thing is not to sit there. So, because some people say I pound people and I pound this stuff down. No, what I'm trying to tell you, if you, if you, if your life is on the line, mm -hmm. you should want somebody to sit there to pound you not to die. That's right. No different. So Absolutely. I come at you that way, and most people dislike that. Some people dislike the way I do that. But I come at, I'm letting you know. You you going you keep going that direction. You going to die, not just of the flesh. The flesh is already the flesh is guaranteed to die. That's guaranteed already to die. Don't guarantee your spirit to be gone. Yeah, that's the only part. I'm that, I'm not concentrating on your flesh. Your flesh is already lost. That's mm -hmm. already that's already a done deal. All I'm trying to go after is your spirit. The flesh. Is I got it, Elder. Thank you so much. No problem. No problem, my sister. Yeah, Sister Jones. I ain't seen you. I ain't seen you in fourteen hundred years. Where you been, my sister? You can unmike, Sister Valeria. Man, she can't unmike. She cannot unmike. I'm gonna leave her. I'm gonna leave her up there. Yeah, Sister Valerie. Sister Valerie. Valerie. Yeah, she can't on mic, I guess. She might be having some issues. So I'm gonna leave her, I'm gonna leave her up there. And what I'm trying to pull. There we oh, go. I'm here, I'm yeah. here Elder. How you doing? How you doing? I ain't heard from you in 1400 years. I know, I, I need to talk to you. Um, I'm doing well, I'm doing well. I've been working hard, working 50 okay. hours a week. Cool, okay. Yeah, but I need to talk to you offline. Okay. Okay, you well, you have my number. I know. I just I know you're busy. Okay, yeah, we're going to hit me after 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 today. Hit, hit okay. me today after we go off. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but 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 everything's good. Other than that, everything's good. I'm trying to pull family in, you know how I am. Oh yeah. I'm trying to get them to see, and and you hit it. My cousin had called me, Chris. You know, you talked to him. Mm -hmm. You hit it on the nail this morning because that was the conversation he called me at uh 10 30. oh really and I said, you know elder coming on in 30 minutes but that's the conversation we had interesting and i he i haven't spoken to him since the video went off well we're still online but mm -hmm. he called me concerned about that same thing christian christianity you know and being called the christian and then we went online and I hadn't seen the title of the message until I hit it this morning. And I laughed, I said, look at the most high. I mean, he, he just doing wonderfuls for, for my family that I'm just trying to get them to co contact you to get, they, I think they believe or the most high is dealing with their heart. And mm -hmm. now they want to do a, a video chat where everybody can come in, but I'm telling them, come on and listen to us. Tell you, tell, you, tell, you, tell you what, tell you what you do. Yeah. Because it's because it's you and I know some of the I know some of the things you're doing. Tell them, tell them what day they want to set up. And we'll we'll set up in Zoom where it'd be your family set up in there. They can fire whatever they want to fire at me. We'll go through it and I'm gonna fire questions at them. But okay. I'm, I'm gonna answer all their questions according to scripture, and then I'm gonna fire questions at them that they need to answer to me according to scripture. And exactly. if you answer them, 
then we'll show them what the truth is. That's it. That's it. Okay. Oh. It's okay. Can it be after December 20th? I'm working 60 hours up until the end. You can be after then. Okay. You can be after then because the only thing, uh, only thing we'll be doing just just sitting here, sitting there out here fishing on the on on the edge of the water, fishing for more, fishing more, for more fish. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you. All right, no problem, no problem, my sister. Shalom. All right, shalom. In. In. And I think this is Brother Bennett. Shalom, Elder. Shalom, shalom, shalom. How you doing, my brother? How you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? A uh, lot better, a lot better, a lot better. How about yourself? Everything's good? Did, did you get a hold to uh, Elder Jenkins? I did. We are actually communicating. We had Bible study this morning over the phone. Good, 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 good. Yeah, man, it looked like you robbed the cradle too, but that's okay. We'll talk later on it. <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to not be in the camera. <laughs> I know. I can just see the picture. I got the picture, but yeah, it looked like. Oh, you, okay, the picture. Okay. It looked like you robbed the cradle, but that's okay. Uh, it's not me, brother. She the one who robbed the cradle. <laughs> Now, oh yeah, I, I already know that it would <laughs> like you have the cradle though. <laughs> All right, my wife actually is the one who had a question for you. Okay. Okay, Elder. So I'm trying to get a spiritual understanding of this whole marriage thing because there's like comments going back and forth inside of the comment section. Uh -huh. So my question is this: When we made our covenant with Yahweh uh -huh. back in Exodus. Mm -hmm. What their blood spilt to to signify that covenant? Okay, was there blood spilt? Yeah. Okay, so, wow. so basically, so basically, are you talking about? So we're gonna we're gonna find out what blood is also. But basically, when they consummated marriages back then with the virgins, it was a token laid down and that the that the woman laid on, and then basically once that uh, piece inside it breaks, and then basically blood would be on that. They take that afterwards, they'll fold that up, take it, and they'll give it to your parents. And then that'd be a token for them. So if he ever sit there and say that she wasn't a virgin, she's not this, they had a token that he can take to the elders. That's what that is. Now, with the blood, and the same thing with that's consummated also, is which is that's the life. Because blood don't mean nothing but life. Mm -hmm. So, but once you allowed him to go into you to become one connected, then that then that's that sealed all deals right there. So it's nowhere, it's nowhere to where you can break it according to the flesh because you made a spiritual deal. Yeah, and that's and and that's what I'm trying to say inside of the comments. Because originally back then, when you were married, it wasn't no piece of paper, you know, like yeah. how we have today where there's a marriage license and then you oh. can get divorced based upon that marriage license. Back then it was a covenant of when the man entered the woman and that yeah. that blood is what sealed that covenant. Yeah. So a lot of us, the, I think a lot of the questions that people have, and why well, I was married before and now I'm divorced, it's like in reality, you were really married to the person you lost your virginity to. Yeah. That's the marriage, you know, that was that original first marriage that you had, but yeah. you weren't in the truth. Yeah, so 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 that's even like where, um, I can even show you back over here. And I just went through this one with someone else. Um, this Chronicles. I'm gonna show you something else. Where a lot of people sit there and they don't they don't even sit there and see the see because everybody know that um, Abraham first wife was Sarah, correct or not correct? Correct. Sure. Second wife was uh, uh, was Ketra, correct or not correct? Correct. And, and now it's after know. Sarah died. Huh? Now it's after Sarah died, not at yeah, the same after, time. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but the same thing as I showed somebody else. I'm getting ready to show you right now because we just I just went through this yesterday with someone else. And I'm gonna sit there now. We're gonna sit right here. We're gonna look in Chronicles, and you read. Can you read verse 32, just up to the semicolon? Now the sons of Ketra, Abraham's concubine. Oh, right said, there. What is, what is she? Now the sons of Ketra, Abraham's concubine. Okay, but there, but you'll see in Genesis it says that she was married, right? Mm-hmm. But 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 you gotta remember what what happened first. You're only gonna get one wife. That's what he's talking about. That's why when you see in Genesis, in the beginning, Abraham, she was doing the duties of a wife, meaning what? She having children. That's what a wife does. That's why Hagar, she became, Hagar became Abram's wife. 
wife because she was doing the duties of a wife providing a child. However, this doesn't sit there and say that Ketra was Abraham's wife. She was a concubine when she was providing children for Abraham. His first wife was who? Sarah. Was Sarah. Clear as day. But people, see, people have a hard time seeing this stuff. Mm -hmm. seeing, and seeing what is true when you look at the Bible, when you want to see what it's actually really saying. And this is all it's really saying all the time. Now, do it diminish Ketra at no time? No. At no time it does. But this is the way God sees it. This is what he sees. Whatever he sees is what we hold to. We don't sit there and say, well, uh, I don't care. It's his wife. No. Tell me right there where she was. Do it diminishes her? No. Don't diminish. It don't say anything this woman did bad. But the same thing, people have a problem, same thing with um with Leah and Rachel. Mm -hmm. They say that Jacob was married to both of them. That's a lie. Rachel was a concubine. Who was buried with Jacob? Leah. Leah. Rachel wasn't even buried nowhere close to him. This is the problem people have when they start looking at stuff like this and they say, oh man, you know, this person is this, or he sees this, that. What we gotta remember is the Bible cannot break. If you're in Genesis, you cannot break it back in Revelations. Mm -hmm. It has to all connect all the way through and never break. As soon as it breaks, it's not the Bible breaking it. You're breaking it, but it's the way we see it. And seeing what we have to do, we have to look at the affiliations of the Bible to understand what he, what he actually means when he says something. So when he says wife, He's not talking about wife as what we say a wife is. A wife is a person that provides the nurturing of, of the sexual activity and the children. You become one flesh, mm -hmm. period. That's under the marriage. That's why it's in the marriage covenant. What, what is the marriage covenant? You become one flesh, mm -hmm. that's it. Now, we got women out here that get upset. You know, they'll sit there, they've spent thousands of dollars on marriages and all this and that. Mm -hmm. Marriages don't even work that way. The marriage should only work with to where you and your husband can have, you spend all this, you spend your money to where if you're going to have that come together, you you rent a hotel event or whatever, and you have your people there all day and they celebrate all day. You and your husband go up to the room Y'all consummate that and you can bring down as a token as, 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 as what you guys get married and you give that as to the mother and the father of the woman. And then you go in there, you going in married. Yeah. All that fleshly having this paying 15, $20,000 for a dress and going to do silliness. Now, yeah. do you honor what is according to the flesh, according to, to, to this side of the world on what man sees? Yeah, honor that because guess what? If he do not have on legal paper, according to man, you got to give the Caesar what's due to Caesar. If Caesar said, I require documents to show that you guys married and that that uh, minister has actually did this, and then you can sit there and say that we are legally married. Now you can sit there and present that to where what? Now you're one flesh according to man, but you always been under one flesh according to God. But you have people will teach you saying, no, all you need is the laws according to God. And then the same thing would have happened is, same thing with, with, with Brother Bennett here. He said that if he was married just according to the laws of God, now something happens to him. Now he goes in the hospital in this life or death situation. They will push you to the side if the mother is there. Why? Because the mother has jurisdiction over him. You don't. Because they're going to look at the legal parts of it. You can sit there, well, we married under God. They, okay, whatever. Mother, what you want to do? The same thing, if something happened to him, then these men want to get these women pregnant and all these things happen. And the first thing they want to do is what? They want to sit there and then all of a sudden they want to leave the woman stranded with all these kids. And the first thing he'll sit there and say, I'm not married to her. I'll put her away. You can't go into court and say, we are married under God. You need legal documentation. You got to give the Caesar what to do to Caesar. You give the God what to do to God. God going to deal with him once he did that. 
So even if he did this on paper and he did this under God, now he do you wrong on paper in divorce, God going to make him pay for that. Because mm -hmm. he got a covenant with God. The covenant's not with you. The covenant's with God. See, most men think the covenant is always with them and with you. The covenant has nothing to do with you. The covenant has everything to do with God. It's the same thing when the woman with um with Joseph and, and um Pharaoh's wife wanted to lay with Joseph. Joseph didn't trip with her. He said, no, I cannot do this great sin against God. It has nothing to do with the sister. So the same thing is if same thing as me. If I went out and I go out there and I'm asleep with a woman, I'm not doing this against her. I'm doing this against God. That's what the issue is. The issue yeah. is not with her. The issue is with God. So you sitting there, you telling God, God, this is what I think of you. Now you got a problem. Everybody thinking, everybody look at too much stuff physical and we got to look at this stuff spiritual because most people are sitting there worshiping him in the flesh and you're supposed to worship him in the spirit. This is where we screw up at. So, you know. That definitely makes marriage a little bit more uh, serious than how the world presents it. When you look at the fact that you're offending the most high, you know, you're that person may hurt and spare his pain based upon your actions, but you got a greater... Uh, <laughs> a greater dealing yeah. because yeah. he's sitting there saying okay okay you're dealing with sister bennett right now but don't worry you're gonna deal with god so god's sitting there saying no you're gonna deal with me you ain't dealing with her you're dealing with me because when he's sitting there he said what he did see people sit there and they say like he divorced israel but again people don't know affiliations he put them away and he put her away why she was horn around the same as I can go into a whole nother teaching, but to show you the same thing. Let's look at Joseph. Besides doing the whole teaching, let's look at Joseph. Joseph and Mary kicked boots before they came together, before they had the party. Clearly what happened. Now, what did Joseph want to do with Mary? Put her away. Put her away. Not divorce her. Put away, can't nobody see her. Why? She's going to be seen as a what? A harlot. Really? So if you're acting like a harlot and people think you're a harlot, we're going to put you away. So we acting like a what? A harlot. Really? So what did he do with us? Put us away. Dang. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this rocket science? No. Not at all. He wanted to put her away because now see, now I'm going to tell you, I can take you to a verse right now in, in John where they told Yahweh himself. When Yahweh was talking all that, that truth to him, they said, mm -hmm. at least we ain't born of fornication. You think they didn't throw a rock at him? They mm -hmm. said, we have, we have, we have one, one, one God and father. They telling him like, dude, we don't know who your mama and daddy is. Well, we know who your mama is, but we don't know who your daddy is. You say it's Joseph, but we don't know that. I can show you that right in the book. I want to read that. Yeah. <laughs> let's, go, let's go to it. And then okay. I got to take Brother Carlos. One second. Let me pull that up. Put that in my, put that in my arsenal. Yeah. Oh, boy, yeah. Oh, you think they don't? Oh, they check him hard. They check him hard. One second. Oh, wait a minute. One second. One second. Let me pull this bow back up. And, and let me pull this up. Let me get all this back up. We're going to find out. You're going to see him check your house shy. They call themselves checking him hard. It, but it's actually, it's funny and it's not funny. Just, just letting you know. One second, let me get it up to it. One second, hey. Oh, wait, why did it go to Romans? Let me, John. Okay. You, you getting ready to see some. You getting ready to see some of the trip. 
Okay, now let me pour this out. And you're gonna see, you're gonna see them, they're gonna check your hour shot. They're gonna check him hard. And they call him Mary a whore. That's all they saying. They, they're not gonna be saying it outright, but they're saying it. I want you to see this real clear. Okay, we're gonna start at verse 40. We're gonna start up here. Let's start up here. Uh, it says in verse 29, it says, and he that sent me, uh, sent me is with me. The father have not left me alone for I do always those things that please him. You see that? Mm -hmm. It's making them mad because you got to read the whole chapter, but it makes them mad. And, he, and it says, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Now the Pharisees around him is getting hot. Then said, Yahweh said to those Jews, which believed on him, if ye continue in my words, ye are my disciples indeed. Now, mind you, this ain't Yahweh I speaking. This is Christ speaking. Well, most mm -hmm. people think it's Yahweh I speaking, but you gotta remember, he, he, he was gonna speak all the words of God, which Deuteronomy 18, 18 tell you that Moses said. Keep that in mind. Okay. It says, ye that know the truth, which is telling you nothing but the commandments, in the truth shall make you free. The commandments gonna make you free. Now watch this. Then they, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed. See, now, mind you, we can go to Romans, just because you're a child of Abraham, that don't make you a child of God. But, that, but that's just showing you how everything's connected. We never been in, we never, we never in bondage to any man. Now that tells you everything. They ain't Israel. They ain't even <laughs> Israel. But, <laughs> but that's besides the point. How thou said, thou should be made free. Yeah, how wish I answer them? Now, mind you, he's speaking all spiritual all the time. They speak in carnal, but watch this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin, telling you a servant of Satan. That's all he said, because Satan is sin. Most people don't know Satan, sin actually means that. Well, that's a whole nother kick on itself, but let's go through it. In the servant, in the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided forever. If the son therefore make you free, so if the servant make you free, you should be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. See, he's checking them and he's making them hot. But watch this. I speak that which I have seen of my father and ye do the deeds which you have seen of your father. Now you see, he just threw a rock at him. Hmm. See, how wish I clearly threw a rock? But well, watch this. <clears throat> They, they, they answered and said unto him, Abraham, our father, how was I said unto them, if ye uh, were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Now, why is it, why is how was I saying all this? I'm talking, he's checking them hard. But you got to remember, how was I ain't no little bitty man? But watch this. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hold to you the truth, who told to you the truth, which ye have heard of God this this did not Abraham, ye do the deeds of your father. Now, they, they, tired, they tired of his crap. Now watch this. Then they said to him, we be not born of fornication. Why are they gonna say that? We, your mama went away to Cerritos and came back and you was there. It's right there clear as day. They even go more. We have one father, even God. Why are they gonna say that? We have one father. You got Joseph, but do you really look like Joseph? Mm. He's checking them and they checking him back because as soon as they say they're not born of fornication, they clearly know she didn't, because that's a community, so they know. If it was a coming together and they had that coming together, they would have known it. And mm. they would know that it was Joseph. but. She just came, next thing he know, she was, he just came back and you, how wish I was there. You, how wish I said, if God were your father, ye would love me, for I proceed forth from uh, forth and came from God. Neither neither came, came I of myself, but he who sent me. Now he's just checking them here. Why you don't understand my speech? Because he's letting you know, he's talking all spiritual even because you cannot hear my words, for ye, for, for, for ye are your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. So he's letting, letting them know, 
Y'all, y'all are the devil, bro. Cause you ain't telling them nothing no different. But they sitting there, they call, they call, they call his mother a whore. Mm-hmm. Clearly, they saying, "Hey, we ain't born in fornication." That's their way of saying, "Okay, we ain't born in fornication. We had, we had coming together." Hey, John, didn't you ever come together? Yeah, well, my mom had. Yeah, didn't you ever come? Yeah, we have. What did your mom have? Your mom went to Cerritos and had a kid. That's literally what's going now. Yeah. So yeah, put that in there and ask them to explain, ask anybody to explain why did they tell him that? Yeah, I got that. No, that's mm-hmm. one that we, that's one I already remember. Yeah, uh, uh, Brother Carlos. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, shalom, Elder Shalom family. Yeah, shalom, Shalom, my brother. Yeah, my question is uh, Matthew 25 and 1 in regards to the lamp and the oil, and what does that represent? The which one? Matthew 25 and 1. The, uh, the 10 virgins. The 10 virgins? Okay, so yeah. then, uh, then, the king, then the kingdom should be like 10 virgins? Yes, sir. Take their lamps and went forth to meet the, and meet the bridegroom? Yes, sir. So, so what do that mean? So uh, my question is what the lamp and the oil represent. What do the lamp? Yes, sir. Okay, the lamp, the lamp and the oil is actually the lamp talking about you. Okay. And is it the oil, the uh, knowledge and understanding? Now, now what do oil, what do oil do? What do they use for the oil? To burn the light. Okay, so what is what, what is light? The law. Okay, so what, should, should they be burning all the time inside your heart or not? Yes, sir. Okay, so what part are we missing? Just a clear understanding. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, let's 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 look at this and go. Let's go down a little bit more. Let's let's. You got your Bible on there? Yes, sir. Okay, you look at verse three. It says, "They that were foolish took their took their lamps and took no oil with them." You see that? Yes, sir. Okay, so why did they have no oil? So how are you gonna have no oil and you try to have light? Okay. So the oil represent the law. Okay, so but you going but you don't have it. You don't have none with you. Exactly. That means you don't carry you don't carry or bear the, the law all the time. Yeah, so 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 well I'm putting it up right now. So it's saying if they were foolish. Telling you right up front what they were. They was foolish. Took their lamps and, and took no oil with them. So what they didn't take with them? They didn't take the understanding of the law. Okay, exactly the point. Because it's telling you all that it's telling you because it was 10. So now watch this. But the wise took the oil in their vessels. What is the vessel? The vessel is your body. Okay, with the with, with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered asleep. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out. Now, how are you gonna go out and meet? You ain't got no. You ain't got no. You ain't got no oil. That, that is true. Those those, those versions. Trim they, trim they lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, give us your oil. So you gonna tell me, if, if, if they told you to be at the train station at 10 a.m. sharp, and, and I show up at, 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 at 9.59, and then I tarried around and played around, and then I show up at 10.01, and I say, hey man, let me cut in front of you. What you gonna do? Tell him no. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to the land of eternity. I get there at 10 05. I say, hey man, I had to sit there and help out and I had to feed my dog before I left. Can I cut in front of you? No. Exactly the point. That's why this had that's why this is going down this way. That's why it's telling you the lamps are going out. And the wise answer said, Not so. These there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather, uh, go ye rather to them that sell 
and buy for yourselves. Blunt as day. You go do that yourself. Okay. Nothing in here is carnal, my man. That's all the Bible really telling. Nothing in there is carnal. Nothing. Got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Elder T. What's going on, my brother? What's going on, brother? Shalom, shalom. Not, not too much, not too much, not too much. No, I was just going to, um, all I was going to just, uh, you broke it down to the sister um, that um, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees were speaking to your house, right, when they said, we be not born of fornication, mm -hmm. people have to understand, too, that scripture really debunks this, that uh, Christian theology doctrine that the most high impregnated Mary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If, if they catch that, if they catch it. Because yep. the most high, he's a spirit. So how can he commit, how can he sleep with Mary or put a seed in Mary and he's a spirit? Exactly. So that's that right there. And the most high will not go against his own laws. So you're saying the most high committed fornication or adultery. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And I'm talking, and, it, and it's all through scripture all the time. I'm trying to, well, I'm looking on both sides, trying to make sure I got all those. And uh, flight, flesh, mankind. Uh, yeah, we just having some people. I was just trying to make sure I got all those questions covered. Yeah, but we have a lot of people who sit there and they try to believe that scripture, they want to take bits and pieces of scripture and then try to join it all together. But if he, if the most high, one thing, corruption can inherit incorruption. Those, those are the biggest things in the Bible. But people continually believe that this is what they can do. They hold on to it and they believe this is true on what they do. And it's not because they saying that, you know, he was born of a woman where he was just a passageway. They, they use some other thing on there. Uh, she was, I know, I know you know what I'm saying, but they say he was a, that Mary was a, like a, just a vessel just for God to go through something, something silly. But I know they use that in Christian doctrine. To, to, to hold on to what, what he did. And he was 100% man. And the same thing is what, what I also challenge people on. And actually, I'm going to go to it. And uh, Brother Mac, while I got you up, I'm going to be going over to this other piece. Yeah, you can go ahead, Elder. They love to use that scripture that God bypassed a man. And that's why he had sex with the woman. <laughs> That's a famous one in the um, Apostolic Baptist Methodist Church. Boy, 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 boy. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to, I know they use a term, and I just could not figure out what that term is. But they use a term to what they, they validate, hey, he, he's it. He, they be saying this, this, this is it. But, but I tell you what, we want to look at, we want to look at something. So this is Moses speaking. And we're going to see, so my question, I'll go right back to it. It says, actually, and the Lord said unto me, and this is Moses speaking, they have well spoken that which uh, they have spoken. So he's saying that the Most High told him they have well spoken, what? According to, the, to, to, to that, that he's that the Lord thy God in herb in the day of the day assembly saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore that I die not. That's what the Most High was saying. They well spoken. I'm cool with it. So now he says this, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee. I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto, unto them all that I shall command him. Now, this is clear in scripture. He's going to raise up a prophet. So Yahweh, they get mad when they tell you, when you tell him he's a prophet. It's telling you right there. So if he's not a prophet and, he, and he's saying like unto thee, so if they saying this prophet is God, so what is Moses? He's saying he's going to be just like him. So if, if he's saying he's going to be just like him and it's a prophet, and if they say Yahweh Shai is God, then what is Moses? That makes Moses a higher God. And we can go right here to Acts. 
We go right here to Acts 7, 737, I believe, if I've got it correct. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I'm dead on it. And it says, this is that Moses, which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. It's telling you plain as day. You see it over there in the old, it's telling you in the new. And we we'll sit there and we want to hold everything else and, oh no, God did this and God did that. God can do whatever you want, but he did things according to his laws and people want to sit there and, well, God did this and God did that. Tell you a whole bunch of lies. Why? Because this is the, Timothy, you go right, go right, go run right to Titus. And Titus, this is one everybody need to just put closely and I'm, I'm getting ready to put it back up to where you'll know it. Yeah. I'm getting ready to put it up to where you know it. You need to put this in there and make sure, because you can actually go look this up in their, in their stuff and they're going to show you the same thing. But just remember this. One of themselves, Titus 112, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own said, the Cretans are always liars. Christians are always liars because this Cretan and Christian is the same thing. So as soon as they sit there and tell you, they're telling you the truth, tell them to unravel that. Because right now the Bible tells them they're a liar. And, and let's see, let's see, truth loves out of respect for my teacher. You know, so wait a minute, one second. We're standing to him. So I'm trying to see this Danny Bennett. I'm trying to see what they said. Yeah, so this Danny Evidently, don't know what they're talking about, but Danny can easily click on and come over here. But however, they sit over there and pretty much just post all the other stuff over there. But the easiest thing to do is to click over on the link below, and you can actually easily come in here, and we can deal with you head on. Because all you got to do is click on the link, and you can come directly in here. So what I'm doing is removing all your junk, and you're more than welcome to come in here. So that's how I run that. Real simple. You want to talk, click on the link, come right in. We can deal with it from there. Other than that, uh, let me bring him up. Uh, Brother Bennett. Hey, uh, you Danny. Yeah, how you doing? Okay, my brother. Yeah. Uh, what happened? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. There you go. There you go. All right, yeah, my wife, she, she was the one speaking. Uh, we just want to get some clarification. Okay. So, Elder, I'm Danny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the conversation with Truth Loves is that he's saying, or she, I'm not sure um, what, it, what, what this person uh, is, um, but they're saying that essentially you're incorrect that they that we are not if we have a divorce we are not allowed to get married again and that people are more concerned with having someone laying in the bed with them rather than being single because the most high has called a lot of us to be single but we are so carnal that we want to have someone in the bed with us and mm -hmm. what i was saying to this person was what you were saying i was saying that's not true. wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute no hold up so ask them what screw what what verse are they using? Hold on, let me type it in because they're still in the comments. So that's what I was saying to them. I was like, listen, this is Elder Johnson's platform. So 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 so, so let's look at this. Yeah. Let's look at this. Let's look at. This. I'm gonna show you something else. Let's go here. 
yeah, so essentially I was saying like this is Elder Johnson's platform. If you have a question, yeah. just raise your hand, he'll he'll answer yeah. them. Yeah. So and who and which one is that? It's truth loves. And then I, I told him like yeah, truth loves. Yeah, if truth love don't come in here, basically all I'm gonna do is remove them. So technically that's how I run this. So but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this up. I'm gonna pull something up. Because yeah. like I said, people would love to do stuff in the comment section. That's what I my think. Thing is, my thing is, you can see how easy it is to come back here. Mm -hmm. Real simple to come back here. It's not hard. All you got to do is click on the link and you come right on in. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. I was like, raise your hand and, and just go in there. Yeah. yeah, they're not even in there. Yeah, say what you want to say to him. Like you're, con you're teaching in his comments. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I'm, I'm getting ready to take them out if they don't. Cause I'm not, that's how, that's how direct I am. Yeah. He said, um, the most high hasn't decided to put us away for good and get remarried to another bride. Yeah. The most high is remaining single until we are re re reconciled back to him. And who is that? Truth loves. Yeah. And he's using that as justification pretty much saying that if you do, so if you get a divorce, right. Uh, in legal divorce, but you're not in the school. But once you become, uh, once you get entered into the truth, once you have found knowledge of the truth, you decide to get married. Yes, there is judgment for that and everything. But yeah. well, well, I'm gonna tell truth love this. He's saying that there is that you cannot get married again. And well, I was like, love, I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm y'all seeing me? I'm deleting the stuff right there clearly. Yeah, and I was <laughs> yeah, like, but, yeah, but my it, thing, my thing is this. I'm letting truth love know this. If he don't come in here. I'm going to I'm going to click I'm going to completely remove him out of out of here to where he just can't come back to this channel. That's how simple I am. I'm that I'm that simple. I'm very straightforward. Yeah, and I was telling him that he needs to address his comments either to you, or he needs to address his comments to the other elder uh, of North Carolina King James Bible. Well, but that's but that's better yet. So what I would do since he's not coming over, I do that. So he's completely removed. It's that simple. So now what I'm gonna do is show you something that, that we need to see. So, so the same thing is, but people try to sit there and same thing what people love to do is try to come up with their own teachings and everything. But technically let's do this. We're gonna go to John and we're gonna see something. And we're gonna go to eight in verse 11. Now, I want you to see this and let's see, did she, did, did, did she have a problem or did she know the truth? It says early in the morning, he came into the temple and all the people came unto him and sat down and he taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. What we just talked about, taken in adultery. Now, when you get caught in adultery in the Old Testament, what happened? Don't you? Without question, correct or not correct? Correct. According to the law. Now watch this. And when they had set her in the midst, set her in, the, in amongst the people, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. They called her while they was in the very act of committing adultery. Now Moses in the law command us that she should be stoned. Now they checking him. We supposed to stone this woman. But now they're supposed to stone the dude too, but he ain't there. But they said, and because the, they caught her in that. But they said, but what sayest thou? So what do you say about this? Because they want to catch him up too. This they say, in tempting him that he might uh, have accused him. But Yahweh I stooped down with his finger rolled on the ground, though as though he heard them not. Most people don't even know what he wrote on the ground. All he wrote on the ground was the law. People say, oh, he started writing down the name. I know you done heard that. If you're a Christian, you done heard that. He started writing down the names of each one of them. He ain't wrote down the names of nobody. He stooped down and with his finger as what he wrote on the tablets of stone, he wrote the law. Right in the Old Testament. That's all he did. But watch this. And when they continued asking him, he lifted up and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, so that same fool over there, that one love or whatever his name is, saying the same thing. He that is without sin among you, 
let him cast the first stone. You don't know if he's married or been married. You don't know anything about him. Mm -hmm. But he's telling you what you can't do. But watch this. And again, he stooped down. He had to finish writing out the law. Stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience. Why? Them laws down there on the ground, they said, oh, dang, I, I did that one there. Oh, okay, let me roll. Oh, I done did, oh, I done buried for, yeah, remember, remember I lied for you when you would stole all that money? They move because they getting caught up. Oh, dang, yeah, I, I did, man, I, man, I stole that Lamborghini and, oh, you know I me. Mean? Went out one by one. Beginning with the elders, even until the last. And Yahweh Shai was left alone. He's left all by himself because he's writing the law right on the ground. Don't covet. Man, you know, I was at the, I was at the Sharia all the years. The woman standing in the midst, Yahweh Shai lifted, him, lifted, uh, lifted up himself and saw none but the woman and said to her, woman, where are those that thy accusers? Have no man condemned thee? Have we all fallen to sin? Yes. He said, no man. Lord, Yahweh Shai said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Who is that talking? Christ. Exactly the point. What did I say? And sin no man. Go, sin no more. You got caught. Now you know what the truth is. Don't mm -hmm. sin no more. Because now you get caught, I'm going to do you in. Mm -hmm. Plain as day. And how was I saying unto them? He's what? I am light of the world. He's making himself clear all the time. And then you can see where them Pharisees start getting hot because <laughs> they start tripping. That, and that would get them all in the issues. But that's the same thing what he's saying. So what he's saying is that women can't do this, women can't do that, women can't do this, but I guarantee you he's doing it. So don't get caught up in those. But the main thing is, you see right there where she got caught in adultery. She clearly was caught in adultery, but he told her clearly as day, you go, but don't sin no more. Once you have knowledge of the truth, there's no more sacrifice for sin. So now you know what the truth is, don't do it again. So now let's say if you knew, you didn't know what the truth was and now they got married. Now they get a divorce and 15 years later, say she got married when she was 20. Cause you, well now let's say some of some young girls, they get married when they was 18. And the marriage lasted for two years. But one year they was living apart. Now she divorced. Now she's 28, 29. She coming to the truth. Now God will sit there and say, no, now you can't marry no more. She just, Lord, I didn't know. Go and sin no more. That's all he's going to tell you. Is he going? Is he going to forgive the guilty? He going. He going to spank you for it. But go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. Once you have knowledge of the truth, go. But sin no more. So he can sit there and hold that lie all he want to, or have that belief all he want to. But literally, what people would do is sit there and they're going to tell you. And I'm pretty sure I didn't even look over there at it. Was he running any scriptures? No. No. He's telling you everything from his head. Everything he's going to tell you is from his head, but he's giving you his own personal theology on what he believes is the truth. And that's the key. That's why I keep telling people, when, when a preacher, a teacher, uh, whatever they want to call themselves, that's of the Bible, when they start talking, when they start sitting there saying what they're saying, that's why I sit there and say, well, tell you what, better than me saying it. That's why I do that. Better than me saying it, let me show it to you. Yeah. I'm going to show you what, what's going on because I'm not going to tie it to me. So when you sit there and say, oh no, well you said that, no, read it again. So when, when, I, when I sit there and say, Christians are stupid, 
They sit there, no, dude, you disrespect it. Did I call you that? No, the Bible said that. You know, and one of the biggest ones, and then I'll take uh, Brother Jesse and him again, one second. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you another one that people trip on. Cause then they don't want to do the commandments. So, it, it, and this is clear, clear in scripture. I'm talking about so clear in scripture and they have a, and they have an issue when we say things like this. Okay, we have Revelations, last part of the book. You get right down to verse 21. The grace of our Lord, Yahweh Shadow Messiah, be with you, be with you all, amen. Literally, that's the last part of the book. That's it. But well, let's go up here. We're going to go up to 14. <clears throat> he says, blessed are they that do his commandments. This is at the back of the book. Last chapter. <laughs> last chapter, last couple of verses. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates of the city. That's clear as day. Am I saying that? No. Do it say, blessed are they that is under grace? Do you see this anywhere in verse 14? No. Nope. Blessed are they that do his commandments. If you're doing the commandments, you can receive grace on God. It's meaning what? You're doing his commandments and he see you, 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 you trying to go right and you're trying to do the things are right. You can receive the grace to help do those commandments. And if you ain't doing them, this is the problem they have. For without, for without what? For without doing those commandments, you're a dog. Ooh. Sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, whosoever maketh a lie. Now, he's flat out calling people who's not doing those commandments a dog. They say, that's me. No. Tells you right there in verse 16, I, Jesus, sent my angels to testify these things in church. He sent his messengers to testify these things in the churches. So I'm calling people a dog. Don't get mad at the messenger because that's all angel is, is a messenger. Don't get mad at the messenger. Go get mad with him. Because mm -hmm. he the one said it. And he's letting you know, I'm the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Guess what? I don't know if David, my forefather or not. He from Judah. I don't know where I'm from. <laughs> I can be a Levi. I can be a, I can be a, from a whole bunch of, I don't know which one I'm from. Why? Cause they didn't, they didn't section us out on the boat. <laughs> but he knows who he is. He said, I'm the root and the offspring of David. And I'm calling them who ain't doing them commandments, a dog. So it ain't me, it's him. I just work for them. So don't get mad at me, get mad at them. And I just happen to agree with them. So they got an issue with them, you have an issue with them. That's how I look at it. But people get upset and when they see that, they don't want, they don't want to believe that. And uh, Sister Watson. Well, since we brought up all this marriage stuff, I think maybe we should have a forum or something where a lot of people are not getting understanding. I see the, the spiritual understanding of it. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could do a teaching on that to let everybody, you know, kind of get a, a understanding because everybody that I'm listening to really has a problem with, can they get married again? Should they get married again? Is it a sin for this and that? And I, to me, it seems like a lot of people are confused. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people can be confused. I can do a form on it and really show you because one of the biggest issues with this is marriage is not really even between your flesh. See, see, that's why I don't, that's why sometimes I really be kind of cautious on what teachings I really want to do because it has nothing to do with your flesh. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And, so it's just spiritual. Okay, let's look at it this way. When you marry in flesh, understand what I'm saying. When you marry in flesh, is it forever? Nothing is forever. No, so I'm asking you. I want you just be plain. So when you marry in flesh, is it forever? No. It says to death do you part, don't it? Yes. Okay, 
Now, is marriage to Christ forever? Yes. Okay, so which one are you marrying? Are you marrying Christ or are you marrying flesh? You marrying flesh. So, so, now but... when you, so now when you consummate that marriage, you understand what I'm saying? Listen to me real careful when I say this. So when you consummate your marriage, are you consummated with flesh or are you consummated with God? Hmm. Yeah. Because it hmm. said, it said, go right back to Romans. If you out there whoring around with other gods, you commit an adultery. Don't have nothing to do with flesh. Yeah, you're going to have to do a teaching on that. Yeah. So even if you're going out there and now you commit an adultery with, with physical, he's proven to you, you actually commit an adultery. So I'm gonna still be punished, whether you could, whether you came in the truth or not. Your past sins, you still will be punished for. Yeah, but he's showing you that you're sinning. You you committing sin in the flesh. He's showing it to you. You can you can right. physically, now you can look physically look down at the person you're doing it with and seeing that you're sinning. But guess who you're sinning to? You're sinning to the flesh. Father. So how are you gonna deny it? You can't. He even tell you who he even tell you who that spirit was. That was Laquisha. Oh no, I wouldn't. Do it. it was Laquisha. It was one of them seven spirits that you that you wanted in you. Uh, 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 uh. You follow me? Yes. You ain't sinning against flesh. You sinning against God. You can kill. The, you didn't kill the flesh. The flesh is dead. So if you kill the flesh and now you're out there lusting after flesh, who are you sinning against? It's, it's, I'm done, it's, 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 <laughs> I'm done, it'll fall on you. You're sinning against God. So it's better not to even just get married again. Guess what? I can show you where his disciples said that. I know that verse. That's what I'm saying. I texted you. I'm not getting married anymore because I'm done. Yeah. I can show you the exact verse, and they saying the same thing. They said, man, it ain't even good to get married. Shoot, it's like that. Yeah, because once you come into that marriage relationship, which, see, I don't even, some parts I don't even want to get into, but since we're there, I just go ahead and bring it. Okay, when you're getting married in the flesh, you're consummating that with God if you're getting married under the knowledge of the truth. So you, you're committing in the flesh, what you're really doing in the spirit. You're consummating your, your, your spirit to God. All you're doing. So you can't get around it. You're stuck. So the only thing is don't get married or when you do it and you want, and you want to sit there and people think that they can get away with something, you're committing that to God. And he's just showing it to you in the flesh to where you can see what you're doing in the flesh. He said, that's why I'm killing flesh. That's why flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God because look at what you're doing. You're sinning. Spirit doesn't sin. So you just got me crying all over again <laughs> because it's like a lot of people out there doing stuff like that. And then when you come into the truth and you just, everything you've ever done in your life, you repent for you. I try to remember everything I ever did ever since a kid. Yeah. But it's just like, it's sad because we're really people are playing with their own salvation, not knowing that any second or any time could just be it. Yeah. And, and the worst thing is this. I'm sorry, you know, I don't I don't want you crying, but the main thing what people got to remember is this. Every generation, see everybody think God gonna take everybody. See, again, goes back to perfect thing now, what Christians do. They think God gonna get everybody together and raise everybody up at one time. It said, death come, then what? Then the judgment. You judge right then. See, I told a Lyft driver the same thing because like, it was like heavily on my spirit when I was talking to her and she was saying thing and I was telling her, I said, you a Lyft driver and you driving people around. Everybody have sinned and fall short. So <laughs> if you don't come into the truth, and stop sinning, stop doing everything you're doing that you know is wrong. 
and start reading the law. I said, what if you die in the next five seconds when you turn that curve? Don't you know when you die in your sin that you're just going to go to hell because you hadn't had a chance to repent or do anything? And it was sad just to see that. She said she didn't care. It's so many people don't care. Well, I tell you what, when that fire hit them, they gonna care. See, but they think it gonna, well, I only gotta deal with this for about 10 years or two. That's forever. Now, My son just sat here the other day and I just bust out crying because he told me he get a second chance. I was like, why would you want a second chance? Okay, where's the second chance? That's what I told him, show me that in the Bible. And then when I went to get the Bible, the precept stuff, he didn't want to hear him or his wife because they still go to church and think Jesus is God. And I said, well, how can you kill God? You know, and then I just get so tired. I just said, okay, I just brush my feet. Why do you, how wish I say there is none good but one? Exactly. That is God. And then when I see my family, I just see dead people walking around. Yeah, yeah pretty much. See, because what we got to remember is this. Every gen, that's why you say every generation. Why do you think he, uh, I don't want to get into a lot of different, he breaks everything down into generations. Just keep that in mind. When you look at the Bible as a whole, everybody is broken into a generation. Everybody is scooped into a generation. Every generation, you got one third coming out of there. Keep that in mind. One third gonna come out of there. All the rest is tossed to the lake of fire. Zero sum game. That's why I'm alone and I stick to the word and I listen to you. Elder T and um, Elder Jenkins, <laughs> I know I tell him a lot. I'm, I'm pretty sure he tell you. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. See, now the Jenkins, you know, he had he 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 had a he had a good he had a good one this uh just the other day, and um you know and um and the other one who was breaking it down, you know, uh, Elder T, he he broke some stuff down again uh, Thursday. So, yeah, I listen to all of y'all. Elder T, he, he cracks me up though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get a lot of people. I get a lot of emails on on him where a lot of people like him. I get a lot of people. You know, they crazy about Elder Jenkins. Because out of the two, out of all three of us, they they sit there, you know, Elder Jenkins, he'll kind of come at you like um, he's your... He's a country boy. Yeah, he's like a, your loving uncle type where people tell me, you know... He's, I love Elder yeah. Jenkins. Yeah. I Elder, take I, him I get, all the time. I get people telling me this. All, I know it's a gentleman that comes on here and he's a, he's a viewer. He's just a literary viewer, but he emailed me. He said, man... um. I like you a lot, this and that. He say, but my mama, and he's an older guy. He said, my mama, she loves her some Elder Jenkins. I was say, I say, hey, it is what it is. As long as she getting the truth, I can care less. As long as she getting the truth, and I know the truth coming from them, them two brothers, I'm good. Because if I need something and I want to an answer me, and what I really respect about Elder Jenkins, as soon as you text him, he ain't been, he gonna text you right back. Oh, yeah. He ain't gonna wait no two weeks, a week, a day, whatever. He, if he's doing something, he's busy. He'll text you that next day or later on that evening, but he's gonna text you back. Yeah. Because I had a question about, you know, when you're reading it, sometimes you do things literally because he's like, you're supposed to put the commandments on your post, door post, and your gate. So I'm like, I was literally doing that for real. So I text him, can I do that? <laughs> so he texts me back, well, which is not important, you know, to say what he had said. But Anything like that, or, or with my spirit, I went to a funeral, anything like that, I'll ask him. I try not to, you know, do it all the time, but he gets right back with you, and I love him for that. Yeah, 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 him, you know, Elder T, you know, he, you know, he'll break you off in a heartbeat, you get out of line. So, you know, but you can see how each one will be in certain ways, you know, and Elder T, he'll sit there, and I'm telling you, he's one of the modest dudes you ever want to meet. When you don't, I love LDT too. Yeah, but but LDT will break you off. You know, he kind of real blunt. He, he, yeah, I call him cut master, so they know what I'm talking when I say him. Most people don't know that's what I actually call him. You know, I do it in love him, but he, but he, because he's really blunt on what he says, and you know, he do it that way. Elder Jenkins is trying to smooth you, and you know, 
and he'll still hit you with the truth, which is going to hurt, but he's going he gonna to keep bringing it. He do it in a kind, nice yeah. way. Elder T, Elder T just, nah, I'm, I don't care. You getting cut, I'm going to cut you. And then he sit there like, dang, I didn't know I cut him that bad. And then he want to go but back. You do the same thing. You do the same thing. I, I think I'm, well, me personally, I think I'm. Nah, uh you do the same thing. I haven't seen you sometime. I'd be like, oh my goodness, he looks so mad. No, I, no, I might get much, but I'm, well. I don't know. LT, yes, I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think LT is, see, I think he takes the cake because sometimes I be telling him, like, man, you didn't, he be leaving all kind of people on the floor. But I'm good because some people need to be left on the floor because yeah. some people just don't get it. Yeah, because he'll cut you and won't think twice. Exactly. And that's what I love about him. Everybody, all three of you, have you your own style. But one thing LT and Ella Dixon said, they'll go to their Uncle Astra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Uncle LJ, that's our, that's our man. That is yeah. our, and see, and, and, if, and what I do like about um, all of them, you catch a lot of people gravitate to um, Elder Jenkins, a lot of older ones, but you'll see a lot of younger people actually gravitate, that'll shock you, they gravitate to Elder T. I get more on Elder T from younger people than anybody. I'm, I'm talking about they gravitate to that man like crazy, and you know, and, younger people like that. They're aggressive. Yeah, and, and I think that's what they like because he's just blunt and he just like and get right. And, he's like in your face. Yeah, that's him. Mm -hmm. But you get a lot. So 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 I appreciate them brothers like that. You know, and they and they try to come every week and and we, you know we all do what we do. We continue to try to preach what we preach to to show you guys the important that, you know, this is not a game out here, you know, and they, 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 they precept the way that they do. And we can, we got to continually move forward. And if, yeah. And one other thing I want to say before yeah. I let you go, cause you know, I love talking, but since these, the, these pagan holidays are coming up, I wish y'all could get on, um, on, um, zoom or something more often or YouTube, so we can keep focused because like, I, tr I don't want to watch TV, but I, I stay in word. I got most of the books and stuff to keep me occupied, but just to keep you, uh, you know, away from straying away. Because, you know, you get on TV, you got the sports going on. You want to watch a little football here and there. And, you, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. we need to stay focused. Like you said, we're supposed to pray, but I'll see things. Yeah. See, because I, I am going to be doing one on, um, on that Christmas scene, and I don't call them pagan, they're actually heathen. Pagan is a is a word that they created to soften it up, but it's actually called heathens. So, but the main thing is I will be doing another one on Christmas and what most people find out about Christmas on what they're actually saying is it's a trip, but then also what they worship. And another thing you look at that, you have to look at it as a whole because you can even see right now the movies they're coming out with and, and it shows you the spirit that's in them because all the spirit, all the, all the, all these, you know, people like to look at um, scary movies or they, these evil type movies. Look at the spirit that's in the people that puts out the movie. And most people think that these are these good writers and good actors, and but those are movies to sit there and this is the spirit that's in them. Showing you what's going all on. All I see in movies are the devil in the details. That's all I see. Yeah. So, 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 so. I mean, I can't watch TV because all I see is evil. Even in cartoons, I can't. I always see the evil, the symbolism, the signs, the devil worship. Yeah. In every commercial, it's like you just you got to be careful. Yeah. So I can I can show I can show you. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show people some things in, in Christmas that people don't actually see in Christmas. Well, in the Bible tells you don't bring the tree in your house and deck with silver and gold, but they still do. Yeah, but, but you're gonna find out something more about that. So we're gonna go a little bit deep on a little bit more spiritual and see a little bit more what we need to see. Okay, well, I'm gonna let you go so you can get with other people. And I love you and God bless. Love you too. Alrighty, my sister. All right, Brother Jesse. Yes, sir, Elder. Um... I was just in regards to that one guy that was on the other side, the YouTube side, mm -hmm. uh, when you had brought up that the scripture in John, I just, something had come to mind, First Timothy uh, chapter four, basically, um, 
first Timothy chapter four, and then also that first Corinthians seven verse one. Yeah. In regards to it is good not to touch a woman, but um, nevertheless to award fornication, let every man have his own wife. Uh, but first Timothy chapter four, forbidding to marry and what, what the book says about forbidding to marry. That, that's what it reminded me of. Okay, and one second, let me pull that up real quick. And let me see. Uh, let's see. Let me pull that up in one second. In. We'll go right to uh, 1 Timothy 3 and 1. 3 and 1 or 4 and 1? Yeah, so we'll go to 3 1. Yeah, 3, we'll start at 3 1. All right. So we'll sit there. It says, <clears throat> it says, now the Spirit speak expressly. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that in latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Let me pull that up over here so we can see it all together. First Timothy three. Wait a minute. What? Did I have that right? One second. Four and one, I believe it. Over. Yeah, four and one. Yeah, I'm sitting there like, wait a minute. I'm pulling it up over here. See, because mine shows different on something. Yeah, that's where it is. So now let me pull this up so everybody can actually see what I'm reading. And so everybody can actually sit here and see what's coming out. So the main verse he's focusing on is, is, um, is actually, you ver you're focusing on verse two. Wait a minute, one second. Two, three, I believe. Yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute, do I have... Yeah, here we go. Yeah, we're focusing on verse three, but we're gonna start at verse one. It says, now, now I speak, now the spirit speak expressly. So this is what you keep in mind all the time. Now the spirit speak expressly and later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Why is he saying this up here? Let you know there's only one spirit, and that's the spirit of Christ. Exactly the point. Now watch what goes on. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with the hot iron. By who? These seducing spirits with doctrines of devils. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Now, forbidding to marry is to marry to who? Don't be married to that one, to that one God. You, 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 you need to be fornicating over here with us. Mm -hmm. Literally all he's getting into. And these meats is talking about what, you, what, what you're gonna be feeding your body, and which God have created to be seen with thanksgiving. And actually they, used to, they, they like to use this verse in, uh, to eat everything. Thanksgiving? Yeah, they like, they like to use that verse for that. Actually, as soon as I seen that, soon as I seen that, I seen, yeah, they like to eat that. And then it says, of them which believe and know the truth. And this and this is the part that they don't actually see for some reason, because it said who believe, which believe and know the truth. So if you know the commandments of God, you can receive things and things get, so it even says that, but they do everything backwards. Mm -hmm. It goes right back to a Christian. It takes you right back to a Christian because Christians actually use this verse. They, yep, and they, they get, you know, they, half the scripture. <laughs> yeah, they literally use that verse to sit there because I remember somebody actually, I seen someone, I seen a Christian use that where they said, you know, they can do this. And then they let her use uh, Peter, you know, um, where the, where the voice and the sheet came down and the voice came down and that same thing. And oh, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sheet and they forget to read on and see that it's actually referring to. Yeah. You know, <laughs> But I'm telling you, that's Chris, that's that's hardcore Christian. I've come in, I've come in, I've come into a lot of them that actually exactly exactly what it is. And once I read it, then they just all they they generally almost every one of them have a tendency to turn away in displeasure and disgust 
as if to say they're holier than thou, and they don't have to read it. And if they hold it now, go to Isaiah. Smoke into my nose that burneth all day. You see how everything, everything. Yep. They, and they'll tell you they straight hold. Hey, we're holy. Hey, now we're holy. <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're holy. We separated unto God. And we're going to pray over this food. And sister, sister, sister Sandlon and made this pork chops and she got these hams and and, and Lord just blessed us. <laughs> One other thing I did want to ask. Could you point me to a, a lesson that you may have done in the past? And I'm sure I've probably reviewed it, uh, but I do want to check it out again if you do happen to have it, if not, but an in-depth study in um, the wilderness. And I, I know we've discussed it and you've mentioned it numerous times throughout your teachings and where we're at I currently tell you in what, the wilderness. I tell you what, I'm actually getting ready to do a teaching on it. I never did one in depth, depth, but I'm getting ready to actually do one in depth on the wilderness. Oh, praise the most high. Yeah, on the wilderness, because I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm, the, I'm contemplating to where I'm just going to do that over at KJBU only mm -hmm. and not even do it on YouTube. Same thing with the um, um, in-depth as far as a look. I know you wanted to go. I saw a couple of teachings. Now, they're like 20, 30-minute uh, short teachings. And there are two separate ones, maybe one part and two part two um, that I have saved in my archives. Um, but a more in-depth study on the, the Shabbat as far as, and I know this is a little off track, but I did want to ask, is there another t teaching that you could point me to to give me some more no, in-depth knowledge on the Shabbat, why 6 and 6.30 or 6 to 6.30 would be? Yeah. Those, those I don't mind doing, but uh, those I'm going to be doing exclusively only on KJBU. I'm not going to do them here. I don't, okay. and I'm going to tell you why I don't do them here. I'm very upfront about it. But the simple fact is we have other, we have other people who actually come over here and they're real cool about it and they won't say anything. They don't normally even comment. But what they'll do, they'll take, they'll take knowledge and then what they'll do, they'll tweak and turn and change and do a lot of different stuff and then they'll go teach it completely different. That's why I don't teach baptism. Mm -hmm. Literally don't teach it. I don't teach the feast days. You can't find nothing there. And literally, same thing. Many people they do the Passover. Why are they doing the Passover? I can, I can go. I can literally run up and down your spine why you shouldn't be doing it if you're doing it according to the way that they teach it, because it's wrong. It's wrong all day long according to God, and they'll tell you they're holding on to the truth. And the simplest one is. If he tell you the lamb cannot be broken, wasn't nothing broken on him. Why in the world are you going to a store getting a lamb that's four, five, six years old and you said, just give me the lamb chops? Yeah, exactly. Like he was pieced out, like his clothes were... Um... That's exactly the point. And they'll sit there and tell you, and you got dudes walking, they show you, you can, you can look at it on YouTube and many places on TV, you have people that go back to Israel, which is really just Jerusalem, they go back there, you see them walking a 15 year old uh, sheep where they're getting ready to slaughter it. And how old do a sheep have to be? Of a year old. Year old. And they walking with, just bought it from Jojo down the street. And now they're walking down the street getting ready to slaughter a 14 year old sheep. It's silliness on top of silliness. And then they sit there and say, they, they, know, they know the laws of God. Okay, if you know the laws of God, why are you doing stuff carnally? Yeah. I'm talking, it's the simplest one to take, the same thing, if you really want to just jump people all day long, I can take them to Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And ask them, what did that say? And it, it'll screw them up automatically. It'll, actually, I can even go to it. There you go. Now you can go, yeah, because I don't, I don't want to leave nobody in the dark and sitting there thing. Book right here in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I can ask most people. I can ask, and may, mainly not people, just in general. I like to ask pastors, hmm. bishops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like to one have one guy. He told me he had a master's degree in uh, in Old Testament, and I broke him down. On, on, on Songs of Solomon 6 and 12. Tore him down just on that verse alone. 
shut him completely down. And this is shut down any pastor, any bishop right here alone. Because it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And they said, well, yeah, this is the, well, this is the beginning of where God created everything. And I tell them, okay, really? It's not even saying that. How did it? And it got ED there. That's past tense. Right. We don't know when it was created. He said when he created it, something he already did. It's past tense. ED. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, now you see right here, God created heaven and earth, right? Yeah. We, 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 we eye to eye right now, right? That's it. Yeah. Let's go to 12. So I'm going to ask you a question. He created the heaven and earth, right? Mm -hmm. Where in the world we got here in, 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 we in Revelations 12 and verse 7, and there was a war in heaven. How in the world that happened? He just created it over there. What is happened? And then it says, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, the dragon fought against the angels and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. And that great dragon was, was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. How did, they, how did all this happen? It was cast out to the earth and the angels and the angels were cast out with it. So tell me from Genesis to Revelation, what is it talking about then? Because now I'm confused. That's the point. Why? I can, I don't even want to get into a lot of, but this is the issue that people run into. And like I tell them, precepts is king. You can't, boy, if you, if you really, king. People can't, they can sit there and tell me whatever they want to tell me. Precept shows you that I cannot sit there and deceive somebody and I go stand before God, I already know. Just show me where the lake of fire is. You ain't got to have nobody to push me in there. You ain't got to, I'm just going to go there. Precepts tells you everything you want to know. I can tell you anything you want to know. I just can't tell you when you're coming back. Anything else you want to know, I can show it to you in the Bible. I can, oh, I can get it for you. I guarantee you that. I can't tell you when he's coming back. But I tell you what, you got preachers to tell you when this happened, they say when, when, they, put a, when they put a church in Jerusalem, and the Satan gonna come in, a man gonna come in there and gonna profess these guys, and then the end gonna come. The stupidest thing in the world. That's what I was gonna, that's actually what I was alluding to, which is the marriage in the wilderness at Mount Sinai when uh, the abomination and desolation standeth in the holy place, which is, <laughs> as they say, the Pope of Rome in the third temple. Really? Okay. Tell me, okay, see, don't even get me started. I'm going to tell you, it's, this is a huge pet peeve of mine, so I'm going to try to be cool on there because I'm going to have to get you out because I'm going to tell you, they're going to be sitting there like, dang, L. Johnson be getting kind of hot. But yeah. this, this is a huge pet peeve of mine on what you're on. Okay, so same thing with what you just said. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to explain this, even though I already know you know the answer, but I'm but just saying like I'm talking to somebody else, then I'm going to ask you this. Why is verse 16 saying this? That, <laughs> can, you, can you tell me this? I asked them that and they, they I actually, one response I got was, uh, well, I don't believe that. And I'm like, whoa, hold up. Wait a minute. Yeah, see. You, you Sharp see, you now. <laughs> you what, in, in, anytime, no, you're not that you're in the temple of God. Okay, so now, not only that, I don't even stop there. I'll go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now watch this. Remember not, remember ye not when I was yet with you, I told you these things. But watch this. And oh, wait a minute, I went up too far. One second, I gotta go down and see, because this, okay. And who opposes himself and exhausts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits, he sitteth in the temple of God. What did 1 Corinthians 3.16 just say? Um, yeah, that we are the temple of God. Oh, he said in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, so if 1 Corinthians say right here at 3.16, know you not that you are the temple of God, why in the world, when we go to Thessalonians, he's sitting there saying that Satan got to sit in the temple? And showing himself that he is God. Unless that Satan dwell in us or that sin dwell in us. 
common sense. Right. Yeah. Common sense. <laughs> See, don't get me, don't even get me started on this because that's a common sense thing. Okay, if we're the temple and he's going to be in us showing himself that he is God, so guess who he is? He's legion. Many, yeah. Man, don't, ooh, don't get me started. Don't get me started. Don't, get me, don't even get me cranked up. I'm not going to let you get me cranked up right now. I'm not gonna I won't do it. <laughs> that, <that's>, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think everybody needs some of that fire, though, because that's yeah. you know it's 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 you, you can't say you believe in every word of God and then you go to them scriptures with a doctrine and then be like, well, can you explain this? Well, no. Well, you know, the, I don't know. I mean, I'm right there with you. I mean, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, they're gonna build a temple, and when they build a temple. A man gonna be in there, and they're gonna put him as God, and then he gonna profess that he is God, and that gonna be on right then, man, uh, brother Daryl. I'm telling you, brother Jesse gonna get me cranked up, man. I'm... Yeah, he got you cranked up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> crazy with all the problems on YouTube, man. It just kept cutting out. But um, well, you go back to the scripture says. Uh, in the last days, many should depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Yes, and, mm -hmm. and we kind of, you know, understand the seducing spirits dealing with Christianity, with the with the silliness of Christianity. But at the same time, among so-called awakened Israel, is the same spirits operating. Um, when we deal with like the twelve tribes charts and mm -hmm. all the, you know. <laughs> it's all kind of doctors out here that these yeah. brothers are just holding to because of because of somebody had a dream and so they hold those people as prophets and they don't necessarily walk in the scriptures. Um, and so I think as far as among Israel, especially, um, you know, a lot of our people got introduced to knowing they were Israel through one West type, those camp type mm -hmm. doctrines or camp type systems. And that's another thing people got to kind of fight themselves out of also, because a lot of the camp stuff is off. Okay, so tell me this, which which they are off, <clears throat> but they coming through that one West doctrine. A lot of them come through one West. But the biggest problem is this. As I as I said, we can go we can go right here to shoot down, and actually I show people this, and actually I'm doing it again just to show people how stupid that doctrine is. Where they want to sit there and they want to hold to um, that twelve tribe chart, or show people we done did it many times, and I'm getting ready to do it again. You go to Genesis 49; it's going to tell you clear as day. Now they tell you when you go to this, you go to this place. There, this is this is them. You go here in right. America. <laughs> since we thought of it in America, America, we Judah. So my question is this. Let's go to right here to verse five. And all you do is run them there. You can go to any camp that's on the street corner, any camp. And as soon as they sit in there, they show you, this is you. Where are you from? Tell them oh, wherever you're from. They say, this is you. Then you say, okay, brother, I want to ask you one question. Let's go to Genesis chapter 49. Right. Park at verse five. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. They're going to say, yeah, okay, but that ain't the point. I just want to let you know these two are brothers. They ain't, they ain't two to play with. Now watch what happens. Oh, my soul, thou come not unto their secret, unto their assembly, my honor, be not thou united. These two will sit there and they will tear you apart. Why? For in their anger, they slew a man. They took out an entire nation of people. Right. <laughs> these two brothers, keep that in mind. And in their self-will, they dig down the wall. You didn't have no protection. They took down everything. Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and in their wrath, and, and for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Hmm. So if he's divided them in the flesh, in the Jacob, and scattered them under the spirit in Israel, how do you know who got on what boat? Because they were right. scattered before they went out. Right, what they are, yeah. 
So you're way off. So number one, and then number two, is telling you these are instruments of cruelty. Who protected the tabernacle of God? Levi. Levi. Something's up with him. <laughs> and now, mind you, this is in Genesis. Levi didn't. Levi didn't get them. Did, he didn't get them. These 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 things until Exodus. So is that why they were to carry out the judgments against their their brethren? Yeah, that's something I could. I'm, I'm gonna show later. I'll show you later on that one because that one I'm gonna do over on you on uh, KJV. On the, but but this but this but these boys right here understand when he said if you come over if Judah come cruising over there to the tabernacle and they don't supposed to be there, guess Levi what? Gonna handle them. Levi gonna take you out. Tell you what, yeah. look at look at Joseph. Do anybody know why? Reuben put Joseph in the in the well. It wasn't for Joseph's sake. It was for they wouldn't kill him. It was for these two. These two was gonna kill him. Right, right, right. When you go back and read it, yeah. It, it was a wrap. These two would gonna take him out. Tell you even more so, these two are the young. Reuben is first. Look at this. Then he comes down. These two sat at the table when they was talking to the people about the daughter. It should have been Reuben talking. These two talking, why? Reuben already know is what? He, un let's, let's go down to it. He is unstable as water. Right. He already knew, I ain't gonna mess with them two. I'm, I might, I, I, they might, they might, they might do me. They sat right there <laughs> and they lied clearly to those people. Circumcise yourself, and we and we going we gonna do everything. Simeon and Levi went in there and took out everybody. <clears throat> and then and then guess what? They got promoted. They got promoted, and now they work for the Most High. Right. Mm. But if you, if you if do me a favor, go back to uh, the thing with Dinah, the yeah. incident. Yeah, pull that up for me, please. Which what part do you want with Dinah? Okay, where where um, where uh, the Hittite guy, um, what when he did what he did? I think it's Genesis uh, thirty. Let me pull it. Because what you're talking about is an interesting thing in there. But because when he said he took her, when uh, yeah, he took her. Yeah, he he did it, he did it against her will. Right, right. So he raped her, and he yeah, and, th and then and the crazy thing is later on he says that he loved her. Okay, so but what is love? So you got to understand you know, what they love is. Yeah, they love is lust. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted her. Mm -hmm, that was it. So when 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 he did with it, because you know that like, if we see Dinah, Dinah is the is our first, uh, the first daughter of Israel. Mm -hmm. From what we know, right? So she's a, she's she's the daughter of the wife. Leah and our forefather Isaac. Yep. So now when he defiled her, when he defiled her, oh, because there, there's a lot of like one of the doctrines in in the one west is you are what your father is, so the mother don't matter, which is which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah. So in that case, if the woman didn't matter, why would Levi and Simeon go after this dude? If their sister didn't matter, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. See, one, one, the sister mattered all the way through. One, two, they they sit there and 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 he took Dinah, which yeah. which was against. And Dinah already knew what not to do. She just wanted to go there and just you know looking at a new city. She just going to hey look what's going, on. and and they and that that, took that prince took her, thinking okay I'm I'm the big dog here and I'm gonna take you and I'm gonna lay with you. And that's what he did, <clears throat> not knowing <clears throat> she got two crazy brothers. Yeah, her brother's like, we're going to handle these people. Yeah, now everybody <laughs> else, yeah, everybody else wanted to be cool about it. But you see, Jacob didn't say nothing. Jacob was sitting there. Right, he didn't say nothing. He didn't say a word. And he knew these two was lying. Reuben was there. Ain't going to say nothing. What are you going to say? These two dudes right here are not the ones to be played with. So they said, okay, 
well, I'm tell you what, we need everybody to circumcise themselves. We need to do all this. And yeah, we can, we can hook it up. Okay, cool. Go ahead, go ahead. They did it. They came up. Go ahead. They came up. They went through that. They went through that city and they took out everybody. And then what they did, then they took their women. Go back and read it. Now, yeah, right, right, right. There's that law that, that if you take one, a woman in war, then she have to shave her head and bewail yep. her mother and father for a month. These, these, these dudes are not... The main thing with, with these two, Levi have a whole nother ball game. He's a special purpose person. He ain't one to be played with. And, and see, and he mixed them in all Israel. So you can have people that's in Israel that that thinking they're Judah, but they really are a Levi. And not, they don't know it. Because he said he, he scattered them in Israel. So you don't know who's who. But then they want to sit there and they say they can tell you who's who. This is what they like to say. I got once I had Elder uh, Floyd up here. I go, Elder. Yeah, Elder, it's me. You see oh, that? Yes, Elder, yes. you know what? We're sitting here thinking with Dana. What happened to her? What do they do to what did they do to our women? What what do they do to our oh they do the same? Our women. They were raped, they took them and raped them, didn't they? So I wonder if that was a clue. Yeah, they do the same thing. But the thing is, the thing is, is what you see what Simeon and Levi is? See, people, people don't like to look at Simeon and Levi. People don't like to look at these two. But I'm going to tell you, Levi was sitting there working in the house with the Most High. He was in the house where the Most High was. And the Most High said, and if anybody come near, handle your business. Yep. And that's what they were used to. I was just telling Floyd just that. <laughs> so and, and I tell you what, they got so in, they got so important. He say they don't have no inheritance. I'm their inheritance. Right. <laughs> these boys rolling. <laughs> these boys rolling with me. <laughs> these boys are rolling with me. <laughs> but like you said, uh, long ago, Elder, mm -hmm. about a year or two ago. Look at your bloods and your crips. A lot exactly. of them are yeah, exactly. Simeon and Levi. Hey, no joke. Blood and crips. They they did not play. And then now they now they just sit there, they got them on a the chart. Yeah, yeah, they, Levi is <laughs> Levi is this and now the thing is, Elder, when you mentioned like you said Jacob didn't uh, not uh Israel didn't say anything, mm -hmm. but as we look at the most high appointing them. You know, Jacob gave them a sentence in 49 for what they did in chapter 49, which you read what they did to mm -hmm. the Hivites. But those were the enemies of Israel. But the Most High didn't have the same mind. Would you say that? Because he honored. No, he didn't have the same people. mind. But, but, but what he want, you got to remember, he's a man of war. So yeah. the main yeah. thing is, when he don't want something coming to the what else are you going to put there? What are you going to put there? You're going to put Nephali there. You're going to put stick Nephali there. You're going to put Judah there. Judah might come up. Hey, what's going on? Hey, bro. Hey, what's up? Yeah, hey, yeah, he's, in, yeah he's in the back, man, but he's busy. You know? Right. Levi, anybody come up to this gate and they don't supposed to be here? Kill them. Because you, cause you see that, that's the rule that he gave, he gave Moses. Right. And Moses and Levi. Yeah, and he told, and so, and he gave that order right to Levi. Anybody come up who don't supposed to be here, take them out. Sure. Levi, all right, cool, no problem. They know, they and, don't anything. An elder. Yes. That, that, and then Phineas, when he took the uh, spear, he did, he's Levi, he did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, see, people don't <laughs> understand what Levi was really all about. When, when, I'll tell you when what. Cosby, he mm -hmm. took the thing. Yeah, that Cosby, Cosby situation. The the Midianites, Midianite-ish, uh, the sister living like a heathen. And he exactly. The spear. Exactly. I'll tell you what. Levi. Just take pure Levi. And you see everything what Moses and was doing. Aaron. A Levi. Now we're gonna see 
when Levi is running things, judgment happened right then. Judah giving you some grace. Levi executing judgment right then. Why? Because the Most High executed judgment right then. When they went, when he, when Aaron boys went and got some fire from somewhere else. Yeah. What happened? They was finished. They was finished. When in, Most High took them out. Judgment right on the spot. Moses, some dude out there picking up sticks for his wife. Moses didn't know what to do with him. He said, oh, Moses, what you done did? You, 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 you done slacked up a little? Well, I'm going to go to the Most High and see what he's going to say. Most High said, Moses, kill him. Mm -hmm. Still some game. Judah installed the grace. <laughs> <laughs> People, tell you, tell you, boy, Levi, Levi ain't playing. Levi, they're yeah. serious about what they did. They serious about their job. Well, they were saying the Haitians are Levi. Like yeah, oh, Haiti. Island of Haiti is Levi. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right. How you get that? <laughs> go, go, go. I tell you what, it was a ship got taken over that was bringing over some slaves. And they, and now this is, they don't know. They said now they think that was a bunch of, they had more than like 40 or 50% Levi children on that ship. Now, mind you, they wasn't taking a lot of older people like in the 18s on up. They had a lot of children and those okay. children took over the ship. Wow. Think about that. And that's not, that's not an account. That's an actually true story on what happened. Because there was one ship that they that they took, and I forgot where it was headed. But as it was going, and most people- The Armistead, that, right, Elder? Huh? The Armistead. Uh, it might be that. They might have made a movie on it. But it's actually a true story. Yes. When they thought they thought they were going to get over. They sitting there thinking they got some money coming in. No. <laughs> Them boys took over that ship. So, so if they made a movie, I guarantee they made them grown. But you yeah, got to make they did make them grown. They I guarantee grown. wasn't a bunch of grown men on that ship, a bunch of kids. <laughs> wow, orchestrated, organized, Israel. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and so, so most of them think that that was um, a lot of uh, Levites that was on that ship. The reason why, because Levi and if Simeon was mixed, they ain't gonna let that go down because that trait is in them to where they, they you pretty much got to, they got to have them almost by themselves and killing them by yourself. Because if, if it's, if it's, if it's, they united, as it tells you in it, that they unite not together, they united, you got a problem. They going, they going to take you out. Somebody going to die. <clears throat> so, and actually, we got uh, we got a person in here already said they looked up Cretans and and only found Cretan, Cretan, Christian, deformed, idiot. Yeah, same thing. But yeah, but then what they do, they change the spelling in there if you look at it. And this is uh, Renee. I don't know if this, uh, well, I keep that quiet, but I don't know. That might be somebody that's real close to me. I'm not sure, but I think that's them. But I don't want to say the name because keep that to the personal. But I believe, uh, but if yeah, if you do look it up, yeah, you're gonna see where well, they actually changed the, 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 the spelling a little bit, but Cretan is all the same, but it means the same thing. Cretan don't mean nothing but Christian and Christian don't mean nothing but idiot, stupid, mad, crate, that's all that means. So with that, uh, I do appreciate everybody because I have been on here for quite some time now and I do have to get ready for tomorrow's teaching. But I do want to uh, thank everybody. I believe everybody in the back. We I believe we answered everybody questions in the back. And what I'm gonna do is just put this as a after afterwards. But um, I'm trying to make sure that everybody else that we have on there is good. So everybody else is good. So with that, we're going to um, pick up tomorrow. We're going to have um, we're going to be going through our Romans uh, teaching. We're going to pick up on there, and we'll be going through. So. With that, I appreciate everybody that went through it. I do um, apologize that it did go that way, but now I pick it up and I'm going to go straight through uh, Zoom anyway, basically when I do those teachings anyway. So I'll be doing it in that, in that format.
So with that, I wish that you guys have a, the rest of your, um, your Sabbath day. Enjoy it. Take your, take your time, rest, and do your studies. So with that, I bid to each and every person a shalom. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. That there's something wrong. You don't know what it is, but it's there. Like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. Do you want to know what it is? You can feel it when you go to work. When you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage. Born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes.